On March 12th, the 2023 Oscars will officially kick off. After viewing the January Oscar nomination list, the Movie Night Extravaganza crew picked a few of them to cover throughout February. That's right, the crew is making a play for Oscar hype. <laughs> Tonight we are talking about Santiago Mitre's historical drama, Argentina 1985. This film follows the trial of the Juntas, where a prosecutor named Julio Cesar Stracera put the military dictatorship on trial. Since the middle class and upper class are largely sympathetic to the fascist military, Julio does not have other trained lawyers to work with. He ends up working with a law professor named Luis Moreno Ocampo and a group of non-lawyers who work in the attorney general's office. This trial was the first time a civil court convicted a military dictatorship. I think it's an interesting film to talk about as Lula is back in Brazil and recently made a commitment to Alberto Fernandez, Argentina's Peronist president, to strengthen relations. I also think it's relevant to this moment in the U.S. as things get worse. <laughs> anyway, before I introduce the panel, let me say, please like this video and subscribe to the Movie Night Extravaganza YouTube channel. Also, we are now monetized, so if you have any pressing questions during this live show, send us a super chat. We are absolutely obligated by international law, human rights law, to answer it. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash movie night extra. All of our after parties are available on there forever. Okay, let me introduce the panel. <coughs> Jandrew World, illustrator, book cover artist, comic designer, and artist for Give Them an Argument, co-host of Movie Night Extravaganza, and Bad Takes. Conan Neutron, co-host of Movie Night Extravaganza, host of Britonic Reversal, and frontman for Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. I, of course, am your Academy Award nominated host in a supporting role, Forrest Miller. Let's bring out those nominees. <laughs> Def definitely getting the Academy Award for biggest, uh, quickest turnover for an intro. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. By we did way, it, I'm, Julio I'm, and Dee. I'm, cam I'm camera off while I just ease into, like, uh, doing this now. It's a, it's a hard change of gear to go from, like, you know, trying to rush something in premiere to just being yeah. like <laughs> well i'm glad we're covering this because uh well first of all the the best international feature is another oscar ghetto kind of where it's like oh yeah we think these movies are great but you know what's better america yeah and, yeah well and, and, and we had like uh trump freak out when uh when parasite won he's like right. i thought we had best international film that, you know, I thought that was its own category, but I guess, you know, they don't make films in America anymore. <laughs> he practically did the It's the Pictures that got small speech from uh, Sunset Boulevard. And, <laughs> yeah, and um, but there have been quite a few incredible um, international feature winners over the years. This one is is very interesting. Uh, so Argentina 1985 did pick up a Golden Globe for uh, Best International Feature, which uh, that, that's sometimes a predictor for how the Oscar goes, sometimes it isn't. Um, really, they make they make it the a, a separate category for International Features, too? The... Yeah, they sure do. Damn. Because again, USA, USA, USA. I feel like Golden uh, Globes are like a dime a dollar. Or right, Golden Globe, I got three of those in this in this <laughs> shelf right here, right, right in this drawer underneath these papers. <laughs> you Golden Globe, <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> it's, it's up there with my, it's up there with my dates. Yeah, yeah, it's over by my Daytime Emmy. 
Thank you. Awards <laughs> people. Yes, that, that kills in the red carpet. Uh, the I also like that the microphones look like they're right next to me on the, <laughs> the background as well. That's pretty good. Conan, uh, you are giving a press conference on the military junta. That I, I am, you know. but the chief prosecutor of cinema like excellence over here. By the well, way, I don't the, I don't like that in this he had to uh he had to like sit in front of the microphone to give his final uh closing thoughts. Like I feel yeah. like I wanted him to like get up and start walking, walking around, around and just like yeah. and be like so, uh, you know, Mister, that was a genocide, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well so I, what i was going to get at is is contentious this year because park chan wook's decision to leave uh which is very good and it's basically his equivalent of uh like vertigo or something along those lines very good film everyone expected it to be like a, a contender for um uh best picture in generally not even just better special national picture I actually don't think it's his, it's his best film, but it is very good. Not in contention. And a lot of people were blaming Argentina in 1985, or blaming. I don't know if like blaming is the right term. But uh, they, they, a lot of people were saying that, like, oh, is it because Argentina in 1985 was uh, was nominated? No, it was it was going to be nominated. This, this is the biggest – well, this is the biggest movie in Argentina made in Argentina. Like, it grossed something like three point something, some a million dollars. Well, I don't know what the translation is for pesos. But it grossed a lot of money, like – and it's it's encouraging to see something that again is not relatively recent history for the, for that country um, at a time of great upheaval where there are many fascist dictators running around right now to yeah, be like that every, everywhere else pretty much because they have uh they they have a nice they have a nice uh, soft Peronis president again uh, Alberto <laughs> Fernandez who um they, I don't know they just threw their vice president in jail though uh, Kirshner I don't, I don't <laughs> like their corruption but. Uh, you know, I mean, do you think Fernandez, it with Jared? Fernandez Look, seems to be sticking around. You know, like I feel like uh, you could mouth off in this show and get jailed for corruption in a South American country. It's like it's like <laughs> it's the thing that they seem to like doing the best. Uh, you know, over and over again. Why follow your bliss is what I say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like it's 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 uh, it, it's encouraging to see it uh, be do so well, which kind of to a certain degree means that um, what's considered an also ran category. With, with the Oscars to a certain degree, like, oh yeah, these movies were good too, but we really want to give it to like so and so this year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've switched Fantastic. up the, uh, the stream yard. Uh, the, 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 yeah, it's, it's the comments look different now. That's uh, that's interesting. Um, the Quiet Girl, the Irish movie, the uh, aka the other Irish movie, is the one mm. that kind of snuck in. She's so, so quiet. quiet. We don't it's quiet, just quietly, just quietly <laughs> snuck up. She's she's fucking, you know, uh, you know, uh Colin, she he doesn't mind her. He he just gets mad at Patrick because he, he won't stop talking. <laughs> Eo, the other uh Jersey Skolmaski uh movie, aka the other donkey movie this year, that's not gonna be the one that we're covering on Friday, uh, was gonna always pretty much gonna be in there. And then there's a lot of uh, buzz about how great Alquai in the Western Front was gonna be. However, I didn't expect it to kind of take over in the way that it did like get as many nominations as it did for me i characterize this i saw with my dad on thanksgiving and this is the perfect watching with your dad on thanksgiving movie it's the best way i, I could put it uh i'll quiet in western front and i mean that as a compliment i think it's better and we'll get to it when we cover that later in in, in the um uh, in the month but i think it's better than 1917 and not nearly as good as come and see in the war movie pantheon but it, it made such a strong showing that i think a lot of people were pissed off especially park chan wook fans of which i count myself among them it's like what no decision to leave but it's the quiet girl that took that last slot which is almost like you never see her coming the, she's just too quiet she's too quiet <laughs> it, it, it's like the pity mm -hmm. slot. i hear that movie that i hear that film's great i haven't seen it. I, I mean yeah. i i barely I've not saw heard anybody talking. say anything about it too like like that's it's just not enough buzz. The buzz is just too quiet. <laughs> She's just, just too quiet. She needs to raise her voice a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I th I think this is great. It's wild that Amazon Prime uh, kind of championed this, this movie. But they're trying to get into the, like, uh, especially with Apple winning with Coda last year. Which yes. controversial pick, in for me at least, because I didn't think it was that good. <laughs> it was good, but, like, it yeah, wasn't yeah. Best Picture good. Uh, and th to, to have such a strong show from a streaming service kind of opens up the like everyone's got designs on like oh well maybe we could have our amazon prime original uh make best picture maybe we could so I, I think the cool thing about that is i think it's going to cause these companies to make uh be a little bit more daring in what they choose to present 
because they, if, if they think that, hey, the world of awards are uh, are open to us and we can present things in these longer formats and like people are maybe not going to, you know, it, it'll get over well, then there's an impetus to do something like Argentina 1985, which is a which is an over or, two you know, hour. Argentina 1986, like the, the yeah, sequel. Yeah, like the sequel. Yeah, uh, exactly. No, no. <laughs> the squeakle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we really actually do need it's, to. Uh, uh, it's it's Argentina, nineteen eighty four, folks. Uh. <laughs> Remember that uh, you know these guys didn't go to prison until two thousand six. That's that's true. I guess you could have Argentina two thousand six. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the thing with that is for me is I think that's encouraging because it means that, like okay these big corporate entities that basically just exist to you know be middle management and like marketplaces where they don't actually provide any value they're just like the marketplace of like other uh and filtration device for what does and doesn't get seen or heard or whatever this is actually an opportunity in this case uh for them to put the money where their mouth is literally on some edgy filmmaking uh too old amazon prime also took a a, a chance on too old to die young which is the nwr the ref and a uh, long form series, longer form than Copenhagen Cowboy, I might add, for people that have seen that, <laughs> which is pretty long form. Um, but it's also the kind of thing that they, they 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 did put their money behind it, but they didn't put any promotion behind it. They kind of just buried it. They, they like if you knew it and you knew to look for it, you could go find it, no big deal. But if you didn't know it, they're not. It's not. They don't have it on their front page like prestige. I mean, they they basically promised them they were going to do a uh, Twin Peaks: The Return for Drive Guy. Right. Drive guy was going to get his Twin Peaks to return. And that is not what happened at all. And so it's interesting that this has generated so much buzz because I actually only heard about it because I was looking on Amazon Prime. I'm like, there's got to be something worth watching. It's got to be something, right? It's like the expanse and like, uh, you know, like, like a couple things. And then I was like, oh, yeah, is that that thing about? I was like, yes. OK, cool. Yeah, I'm into this because. Again, I think courtroom dramas, people are recency bias poisoned with like uh, Trial of Chicago 7 and whatnot. And, and to a certain degree, I think we're all kind of still suffering from the few good men <laughs> style uh, thing. But I love a good courtroom drama. And I think that this, this is a really good one. And, and for a actually a kind of important thing to document, because when you think of like the disappeared and like what yeah. happens in this in this film, documenting actual stuff that happened, I get when people are bitching. Well, I'd rather just watch a documentary. Cool. Well, that yeah, makes one percent of you. Too. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it, go watch it. This is not. This is something. Last else. twelve this minutes of this is basically a documentary, though. I mean, if you really want to go <laughs> you into see, it, the last, you uh, see all the people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> uh, so, but I, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> no one. No one cried for this movie. Get it? Mm. <laughs> but I think that it's 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 notable for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that uh, it's wild. That this Don't cry Amazon for me. This up. Argentina. Because for me, that means that maybe they're going to take a that these streaming services, which have not done the innovation that they promised. I mean, it means that there may be a financial impetus prestige wise to like pick up more daring, weirder stuff. And that's cool. And I think that this this is this is actually a really cool film. It is like, like, look, this is a buy the ticket, take the ride film. If you're like, oh man, I hate courtroom dramas. Yeah, don't watch this. What the even fuck? though it's the not even just a courtroom drama, the like satellite don't watch awards, this, the satellite awards, uh, Hollywood Critics Awards, and uh, the British Academy Film Awards, they all do either international or uh, the British Academy does best film not in the English language, which is just so weird. <laughs> 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 we don't quite want to celebrate unless you're speaking the, the king's tongue. You know what I mean? The, I mean, they have that <laughs> horrific dub. That's the one thing I'll say for people who want to watch this is, is turn on the subtitles unless you're like Andy and you're like drawing or something. Way, 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 yeah, and yeah, Amazon's which, like, yo, these, uh, you know, these Americans as are going to want to dub. This, like, this these, is these not Americans bad, are going to want the dub version. <laughs> it's not a bad dub. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not like when the, the show Dark on Netflix premiered. And I started watching it. I was like, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Yeah. What I hated was the dub. And when I moved to the subtitles, I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. This yeah, is no, really no. good. Lola this Lola is like... was, was uh, the same with me. Uh, I, I was watching oh, yeah. it uh, with uh, Lola. Dark because, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, well, the funny thing is, is if you actually watch the uh, dub version, he's like, uh, I, I could not stand the guy doing his voice because he was like high pitched yeah, yeah. and whiny. And then I switch, yeah. you know, he's like, he's like, Lola, Lola. And then I switch, he's just like, Lola. Yeah, he's, like, he's got a super deep Whoa. voice, which is hilarious. He gets more <laughs> different. 
uh, yeah, anyway, so that, that, that was like a, a unrequested soliloquy uh, about this. But I think it's interesting because we're, we're in a very unique time for film distribution for something like this. That again, huge hit in Argentina because of course it was, right? But like to be able, even have it get out in the world and be uh, in contention for awards is fantastic, let alone winning a Golden Globe. And I don't know anybody talking about it, even on Letterbox. I mean, most people talking on Letterbox that are, are, are in Espanol, frankly, and I took German. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I get it. I get it. Was, the funding was through uh, the U.S., but you know, like it's uh, through, I guess, Palm Springs International Film Association and uh, Amazon, and then also the United Kingdom. Oh wait, that's the that's the link. Wait, let me see the. Um, but uh, yeah, the United Kingdom and like uh, Argentina, like all three of them, I guess, um, yeah. companies and each one pulled money together to get this distributed and produced, which is that's awesome. Kind of fascinating. It's an interesting uh, coalition, uh, to be sure. But I think this is this is cool. yeah. Usually, usually that's like uh, you know the Falkland Wars or something is just broken out and everybody's fighting <laughs> right. each other. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> we need some common cause, quick, folks. Uh, I like that it spends so much time not just looking at the lead up to the case. But like showing the intrinsic things of like, oh yeah, no one wants to work this. No, if people don't want their yeah. lives threatened. Nobody wants to work anymore. No, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants when, to work when, cases uh, anymore. You no, know, yeah. when 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 the junta is you know uh, possibly gonna you know kill you, and also you're rich. Nobody and wants to. I just, to, I just no love the whole to... like like you know going through like everybody like oh he's a fascist he's a fascist you, mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah exactly. and, 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 and some him. of them some of them are like originally not fascists. He's like uh, oh he's like, became oh, he's a fascist. Like what? He's like he's dead, but he also you know right before he died he was also a fascist. Like it's crazy. Yeah, he's a fascist convert. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's fascist Jason, really. Uh, the one guy, he's like, he's like, he slowly became a fascist. And the other guy, he's like, he had a heart attack, but he was also a fascist. I don't know. Well, and it's a common thing because when they have like uh, the guy, the the main assistant prosecutor guy, like his mom is like, oh yeah, like you know, we go to the same church. Of uh, they go to the same church as like uh, one of the guys. It's like we'll it's never like uh, it's like it's like my grandma and the um and and the Home Depot guy that's always on TV yelling about how. <laughs> people don't work anymore they go to church together and she's like what a nice guy in that same way you know the yeah. the uh the, the main army fucking admiral <laughs> right right in the way that but then when you hear like testimony of like the the horrific things that were done to these people then like you know it actually becomes compelling enough of a case like oh maybe he's not this, this guy's not a nice guy at all like it's horrible and that's what's so interesting is this is in the modern age this is the first time that's really ever happened like, I mean, you have, you have things like um, you know, war crimes uh, tribunal and the Nuremberg trials and whatnot. But as far as a country basically prosecuting its own previous government. Uh, or at least in a, in a civilian court. like In a civilian court. Yeah. Well, I should. I yes. should. You're right. I forgot. To because because in a military court, I mean, they, they let people off. Well, they, they do that all the time. That's, that's yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. They're, they're like, we'll, we'll let this one guy uh, prosecute the other. We'll let this one guy like Juan or something. You know, he can take the rap. And he's like, I was just some like bureaucrat. And they're like, nah, the you, sir. You, sir, were the Hitler of Argentina. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. also I, probably uh, maybe Hitler because yeah. there's a lot of fucking Nazis that uh, fled to Argentina. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you watch Hunters, on, also on Amazon Prime, Move Next Travaganza, brought to you by Amazon Prime, apparently. Um, <laughs> Bezos yeah. bucks. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> well, but it, yeah, like it's, it, it, it is uh, an unprecedented moment in Argentine history, uh, but certainly a very momentous time in general just because like that just wasn't done it just wasn't done like if if you want to do something like that you had to have still something like done. the nuremberg trials where, well technically speaking it still wasn't done yeah uh you would have to have something where you had like a coalition of multiple nations like no we're gonna like this is this is happening right now you have to have like that level of, of international involvement so to have it just be like no these are these are war crimes and these are these are things that you know cannot be swept under the rug and pe somebody needs to like take ownership of this and, and do it. There, there was no, Oh yeah. Just do it. Like so-and-so did. No, there's no, <laughs> there was nothing there. Which and is they, astounding. Uh, they directly connected it to, um, to the Holocaust, which is interesting. Like yeah. the never again, yeah. them of genocide, which, uh, you know, usually is like ethnic groups. And in this case, um, I mean, I don't know. Argentina is a very vast country with a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, multi, multi-racial coalition, I guess, because some of the people in fucking Argentina, 
very much do not you know they look like they uh they're they're you know eastern europe bound <laughs> yeah, yeah well yeah i mean a lot of uh jews fled to argentina during world war ii so so like you know and of course, and, and uh, then the Nazis, the Nazis. <laughs> yeah, the Nazis, <laughs> and the people that were coming after him too. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah, so so, so yeah, it is very diverse. <laughs> Get some schnitzel or a bagel. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, the the uh, people who did. Um, uh, you, see, George, you see any uh, did... you see any local Jews in uh, Buenos Aires? <laughs> and he's like, uh, no. <laughs> But no, the, the people who did Curious George after they fled France, because uh, like literally they were on their bicycle with the manuscript to Curious George uh, on their bicycle, riding across France with the Nazis on their tails. It is it is an amazing story if you ever get and a chance to find uh, it. And, and, and after they left, story about the monkey into the uh, into the mail. <laughs> um, but no, it's they, enough they to got... make you furious, George. Am I right? <laughs> they, they got out of uh, uh, Europe and uh, went straight to Argentina, and then ended up in uh, the, you know the United States. When they finally got mm -hmm. the uh, the book published, so um, there's a great documentary on that, by the way. If you, you want to watch it that, in their giant hat, their giant <laughs> yellow hat. You know, it's... well, if they wore their yellow hat, the Nazis would have found them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yeah, that's the, the, Na the Nazis uh, make Jewish people wear the uh, the yellow hat. You know, just the. <laughs> oh no, wait, no, that was a star. <laughs> But Although, I mean, just the thought that what, they one might argue that the hats would be easier to track. But anyway, yeah. not, that's not what we're here to say. No, <laughs> no, just go well, for the, the Nazis were right. Is what you're the Nazis were, were yeah, yeah. wrong about that, but right about everything in, else. Is what you're... In summation, they got the hats wrong. Everything else, well, let's, uh, let's hear about. Yeah, <laughs> don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> yeah, man. But anyway, so like, um, so Forrest, you you just watched this very recently. What what was your what was your take on it? I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I think it was good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm processing it still. It's a hard uh, it's a hard transition to go from just yeah, watching. He's that. like literally, basically turned literally it literally off and then like it. Yeah. came on air. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then made that video somehow. Yeah, exactly. So so uh, wait, I want to hear how you guys heard it first, so I can. I uh, I heard about it because like I'm just into uh, like all of that. Uh, he's, a, you know. he's into juntas, really. It's, yeah, yeah, no, no, like like. <laughs> That that history. Well, I I mean, you know, I have that graphic novel that I need to finish. That that, that I've been working yeah, on. Yeah, the that, coup, uh, the coup Cinema Club. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, uh, I actually watched it on uh, October thirty first uh, when uh, right after Lula got elected, and so I was bawling my eyes out at the end of it. Um, because like I was still like really emotional and this like hit the same thing, and I'm just like yes, you know we're. <laughs> We just kicked out Bolsonaro and this. Yes. That's a get their ass moment for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's even even though it's not happening in real time, it still counts, right? It still counts emotionally. Well, and, but one of the things about uh Lula's imprisonment is that it was like a lawfare coup, which kind of is is kind of uh like hiding the same way that this would have been, right? Like this was on the side of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Lula's thing was like, oh, we're gonna prosecute the government. The democratically elected government, by the way, we're going to pros like prosecute all the PT people mostly uh, for corruption. And then it turned out to be like uh, U.S. trained lawyers that were like, yeah, we just want a right wing fucking president. Like, <laughs> yeah, see, it's easier uh, to serve the interests of our country uh, that way. So that's, and uh, that's that's, that's lawyers, usually that's that's lawyers goes. doing bad, breaking bad or breaking bad, breaking. <laughs> but what if breaking bad, but lawyers? Uh <laughs> I think that yeah. So I, I, I mean, saw this better call Saul, right? It was basically <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw this much. Oh, were you done, Andy? I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to. Oh, pretty much. Okay. Um, I saw this much more recently. I saw this last week because I've been meaning yeah. to do this for a while. Uh, and and again, it was it was the typical like uh, oh yeah yeah let's let's see like what's on the we have all these streaming services right? what's on these right. Um, and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I heard about this because I did hear about. It. I heard about it when they were making it. I was like, oh that, I bet that would be super cool. I bet that'd be like something I'd be like super into. And then I looked at the runtime, like, oh <laughs> no. <laughs> and and then, you know, it was an early evening, and I was like, you know what? Hey, let's let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, that's icky. Come on, dude, what are you doing? Sorry, I mean, I mean, I mean, attacked. By, I got my own junta going on under here, right under my feet. <laughs> You're replaced by a cat. They're trying, like, they're trying like, to overthrow it's a kitty, the uh, it's a kitty coup, you know? It's a, it, yeah, uh, it's, it's a, kitty they're kitty. cashists. Oh, <laughs> indict you for corruption. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this was, um, 
uh, a hard, uh, a tough uh, rewatch because I, I just watched Fled last night. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that. Um, that that uh, nope. uh, documentary uh, about an immigrant uh, who came from Afghanistan to uh, Europe. That's uh, animated. Uh, oh, I've heard about this, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, like I just watched that last night because I'm just like, oh, let me watch a foreign film because uh, I need to watch. You know, like I, I just finished this book cover. I need to. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. watch something where I'm not looking at my computer screen and, and uh, yeah, and then this movie. So, so it's uh, emotionally, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so, this is I mean, they have uh, they have the the like comparison between like the real uh trial that they oh, filmed nice. and oh, cool. I mean, we could just like I, I could play this on mute, I don't think it really has, <laughs> but it's kind of interesting to to see some of that while we talk. I, th- I think Icky would make a great Bond villain cat, uh, hmm. but he's not not right now. But he's definitely he's got the look for it for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, when they, well they show the end right, they show all of the real people, and and you see like you know uh, how close some of them are, and how great yeah. the uh, production design and the the makeup and and the casting uh, and the uh, casting and all that is, and and like it, it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, like I, there's not any one that. Um, strikes me as bad or anything, but it's also, but I, and I feel like that's, that's become like a cliche almost like, Oh, here's like this biographical picture of all these people. And then, Oh, look, here's what they really look like at the end. And we roll the credits over it, but it's still kind of cool. I mean, I, I still think it's interesting. Um, I think it's a nice blend of archival footage with reenactments. And, and I think, um, I, I think it's done. So in such a way that it's not like a cheap, uh, plot, like a device uh, to take the place of plot in this movie, which I, which I think can happen. And I, unfortunately I've seen it many times it's sort of like, Oh yeah. You have the sepia tone <laughs> picture. And then like, you know, you have like some musical cues that are very treacly like underneath and whatever. And you know, what I like so much is how much of the film is centered around the depositions of the victims, because that's what makes this, so astounding is that remember this is like the dawn of the um uh, the worldwide news network and like you know cable news 24 hour news etc cetera, etc cetera. and to have that transmitted like worldwide means that not only were there uh, countrymen uh hearing about this in real time and hearing about all these horrific things but the entire world was hearing about them and that also makes it momentous uh for a film because it means it's Obviously, it's sailing if it's your country, but, you know, I think we can all agree that, hey, this is maybe not the only place that this has ever happened. <laughs> and yeah. to have that on the TV, again, hard to describe for like we have like these devices in our pockets that are instant connection, good, bad, ugly and indifferent to everything in the world always. But I mean, just disseminate that information was impossible because the government literally wouldn't allow you to. And there wasn't the uh, the conduit to do so. It's a public square situation, right? Yeah. And, and like, uh, I, I uh, find it astounding that uh, we've not actually seen any like, uh, you know, uh, any other um, court cases that actually has uh, taken influence from this, too. Um, it does seem surprising. Right. I mean, yeah, because like like one of the big things that they were charged with was, uh, you know, taking children because um, because yeah. one of the things that they really didn't cover in this film, uh, you know, people's children were taken and then sent like, uh, you know, given to uh, good fascists to, uh, to be raised because they want. Right. To, uh, right. Destroy. Here's a kid for you to raise as like a yeah. reward for. Your and they didn't just do it in Argentina. They, they were sending the kids to no. like, Chile and, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. you know, all the neighboring uh, Brazil and, and all these other places. Uh, to be raised so so like like this is kind of a big deal and that's what they were convicted on uh you know yeah. one of the one of the ca- uh counts that they were convicted on and, and the fact that like you know we're not using uh this to convict donald trump like like uh or, or any of his administration well and so that's what's so and this is not msnbc so we're not going to draw a direct line to, to donald trump and fascism and make that our whole raison d'etre but when the Biden administration came in and like one of the first things they said is basically, Hey, we're not going to prosecute anything was like, yeah, which is of course. BS. And I think that's your yeah. answer as to like why this doesn't happen more is because it's, it puts you in a stronger or a perceived stronger political position to be like, Oh, we're turning the page. 
which but, but it always crimes are still crimes. Yeah, and it yeah, weakens uh, everybody going forward. Because, like, if we if we put Nixon on trial for for what he did, we might not have gotten Reagan. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you absolutely. I, I this stuff all has a ripple effect, and but but again, but, but like, let's also think about the fact that we're still talking about a party that is working on the same playbook they did. They were using in 1985, literally, because what they they have never moved past. Uh, the um, like like Reagan, Reagan Revolution. They've never moved past it. They've never changed tactics at all. The fact that they were not able, not only not able to impeach that guy, but not able to press the case as to why anyone should care about a literal, <laughs> literal coup. <laughs> That's what it is, folks. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 called a seditious act, and you and the definition is you should be hanged by your neck until you are dead. It is literally in the 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 founding, the founding fathers put in the framework of this country, and they were able to turn into a rallying cry for like, oh, well, th- we were done wrong because they're prosecuting us for this. Like, I mean, they just have no control of the language whatsoever. Not zero point zero percent of it. And so, if you take the turn the page philosophy on one hand, which is the like, Oh, we have to be better than them. Uh, and in order to be better than them, we're going to just give that a pass and, and move on. And then also still never operating, never changing your tactics or operations and kind of not listening to anyone that isn't already like in government and in the beltway and like, you know, a beltway <laughs> uh, media reporter or something along those lines, then you have this, Complete this uh, confirmation bias, cozy little circle. And th- what they'll tell you is things like, you know, like, oh, like, you know, the people don't want that. No, the people honestly don't care unless you give them reason to care. If you have testimony from people, uh, you know, a lot of the horrific things that have been done to them, you know, pregnant woman being like kicked uh, within an inch of her life in a car, things like that gets people's attention, right? What it, what it doesn't is like, putting up these vague aphorisms that have no um, that have no stakes to them that have no names and faces to them. And that are just things that someone can be like, well, you're just trying to attack us. You're trying to make us look bad. That's, that's the problem. And, 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 and yeah. also it requires a certain kind of prosecutor. Right. And, and Merrick Garland clearly did like, he is the kind of guy that he, he likes to, he's old school. He's going to like work in secret if he ever does anything, it's going to be very judicious and like ironclad legally. Cool. That's an old playbook. And like, I'm not saying that that doesn't, that that doesn't work anymore, but when you have active, it didn't used to be that you would have active media campaigns against uh, <laughs> active yeah. cases from the U S justice department too. And we do, and we do. And that is a thing that like, you can not like it all you want. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And, and what's interesting is that's one of the lessons learned from something like this. Where, yes. you know, a bunch of bunch of people, especially, you know, think of think of like what's going on in uh, 85 at this time. You know, I, I ran Contra and whatnot. It's like a <laughs> gnat's hair away from from any of this. I, they're like, yeah, the last thing we want to do is, is like end up like Argentina. You know, we, we got to make sure that, you know, we take care of the courts and we got to make sure we inoculate ourselves in a way. Let's get the most telegenic dude possible. You know, North's a true believer, put him up there, use the, use the media, use the media in such a way that people like identify with him or just think of him as a good Patriot. And you know, the people that don't like him are the people that we don't need. And that is in the eighties. And literally that playbook has never changed. Only the mediums has. And, and and it's incredibly disappointing, but that's how quickly that they that they reacted to this because they realized that the game had changed, whereas the quote unquote good guys, aka the forces of justice, mostly didn't change their tactics for at least fifteen years. No, and they're still <laughs> using the same tactics and same playbook, and and it's mm-hmm. it's it's ter- terrifying because like you know, you point it out to to any of them, and they're just like, "Well, you're, you're crazy. You don't know anything about politics." Well, exactly, because they're so because all the people that they talk to at cocktail parties tell them how great they are and how right they are and, and how correct everything they're doing is, and, and that's the problem is that like that that now they think that they're like playing three dimensional chess if they go on like Rachel Maddow and just talk about like you know oh the destruction of uh, judicial norms nobody cares about that nobody yeah. cares about that and it doesn't convince a single person and but if you put together testimony from victims on camera like. Literally, we're looking at right here, like the the real deal and the actress. Like that connects with people. 
if you can if yeah. you can get, get it to we, them, we, it'll connect with people. We, which we, is uh, which is uh, why the Joe. during January six hearings, right? Like the ones where uh, the Capitol Police or whatever testified were much yeah. more um, you know interesting than the ones where they had like some law professor or something being like, "This yeah. is our this is our democracy," and and they can't do this to us. And it's like, shut <laughs> up, nerd. Nobody cares. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or or when Mother Jones released the tapes of the uh, children crying at the detention center, like like you know. Uh, or the one, or the one, real, uh, the one, the one testimony that Trump fucking uh, tried to go there. They had to like hold him back, and then he was like, he was like trying to grab the fucking wheel from the guy that was driving, his security guard or whatever. And oh, I was yeah. like, let me get to the yeah. Capitol. I want to go there. I want to go there so bad. I want to go to Burger King. Can we get McDonald's? And then they're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's so insane. But like in the same way, the only person, so going back to, to Andy's point, the only person that really moved the language forward on that is when AOC called them concentration camps. And literally, there was a week and a half where people argued what did or did not constitute a concentration camp. And, and, and some of them were liberals who were, who were arguing against her uh, calling it a concentration camp. Sure. Oh, but the that fact is that the argument became about that rather than if it – because remember, for a while, there was – oh, that's not happening. Like, literally, like the gaslighting administration, right? Like, oh, yeah, that's not happening. We're not – and that's like, no, yeah. we literally see them. Here are the, here are the pictures. Here's it, it also, It's also interesting <laughs> that, like, uh, you know, it's not the first – like, uh, World War II was not the first time that there were concentration camps. Like, that's a term no, that comes from the, the Spanish fucking, uh, you know, dominating the Philippines. And then us dominating the Philippines and, and using those concentration camps to imprison Filipinos. Like – that's uh, <laughs> after being like, but, you know what? We're going to help you guys get freed. And then we were like, all right, back in the concentration camps. But but there was an, the the uber Zionist definition of it is that can only ever be about the Holocaust, can only ever be about the Nazis and the Jews. And, and like, again, I'm, I'm not looking to get on a list and <laughs> looking to get in a crosshair, so to speak. But like, I mean, they, they attempted to completely reclaim that term to be only about the one thing. I, and that's I what made that so interesting because uh, you're using the language of things like APAC against them then they get to make their insane argument but well everyone is 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 what i said i, I want to keep god through it i know i said i want to <laughs> i was i was trying to interrupt when you said the thing it was going to be funnier you know 30 seconds ago oh. but i said uh you know i, I, I want to keep being netanyahu's favorite movie podcast <laughs> exactly we're getting that apac money one way or the other it's all about the benjamins uh but like it it, it it was brilliant tactically and strategically uh, from, from, from language perspective. Cause if you know how APAC is going to react, you get to let them say their insane things that people are like that's crazy. And nobody thinks that, but you, and then it becomes again, it furthers the argument in such a way that people are like, wait, what are they talking about? Like whose kids, what country, wait, this country. Then like that actually got some, some people that otherwise wouldn't have paid attention to it, to it. But the thing is, you and then have, Biden won and they immediately forgot about it, but you know, well, it went back to brunch. Right? Oh, well, yeah, Biden, the... Biden fixed everything by, by his mere presence of being president. Yeah, yeah exactly. Best, but anyway, but like, it, but it's it's interesting to me that um, this is normal. We're back to being normal. They did do it with Ukraine. With Ukraine, they did do. It. We were flooded with images of like, look at all like what these horrible Russians are doing to these poor beautiful, people, which... beautiful white people. <laughs> You, yeah, yeah, because Biden didn't roll back some people. of Trump's, uh, uh, you know, uh, immigration policies until Ukraine happened. Yeah, and and, it, and then it just becomes everything becomes uh, to connected to optics. You know, can you can you present a visual story that someone with maybe two point three seconds of attention can immediately parse and be on your side for? And if you can't do that, then don't bother. And then that becomes people like everybody thinking that they're being incredibly advanced in thinking about their politics that end up talking them out of doing anything because they're thinking like five steps down the line instead of just doing the thing for the sake of doing the thing. But it's crazy to see that because it's kind of ground zero of again, using television like cable television and like, and like satellite TV, these new technologies at the time to yeah. like do something that literally never been done before. It's an incredible moment in history. I'm glad there's a movie about it. Even if it isn't like, Oh, uh, it should just be blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. All these. It's like, okay, fine. Just didn't fucking watch a documentary or write a book or read a book, whatever. Like, but like yeah. this, this is the point isn't to get 100% of every piece of it with every contextual piece of linked history there. The point is to tell a goddamn story. People wake up. No, wake I, up. I, people. So I, I'm I, so glad we don't, that we don't the, have to watch. We don't have to watch like all of this, obviously, but, uh, the the prosecutor from this movie um well at least luis moreno uh acampo 
um, he was interviewed by uh, by Amy Goodman three weeks ago. And oh, I haven't, oh I really? Haven't, yeah. Uh, so did I you talk about his uh, plot to get uh, Coney? <laughs> <Haven't laughs> That's haven't. amazing. But uh, <laughs> l- l- I want to I want to see a, a few minutes of this and see. Um, yeah, yeah, let's check it out. Just just so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, he had a plot involved. We never know what you're Jolie. talking about. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt to capture Coney and uh which never happened, but it's just amazing that 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 was a that was something that this guy came up with. By the way, legendary prosecutor Kamala could never uh <laughs> now, now.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're continuing to look at the new film Argentina 1985 about the trial of the Juntos, the civilian court that prosecuted Argentina's former military leaders for brutal crimes committed during the U.S. backed right wing military dictatorship from 76 to 1983. The film, based in part on the story of Julio Stracera and Luis Moreno Acampo, who prosecuted the Argentine military leaders. Ocampo later became the first prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. This is a short excerpt from the film about their struggle to find a legal team willing to investigate crimes committed during the military dictatorship. We need to look elsewhere. Where? Law school? Not exactly, but in that direction. At the attorney general's office, there are kids willing to work with us. Kids? Yes, in every court. We need young people with less experience. Less than you? If the seniors won't do it, (laughs) then we bring the juniors in. An excerpt from the film Argentina 1985. Earlier this week, I spoke to the former Argentine prosecutor, Luis Moreno Ocampo, who's portrayed in the film. I began by asking him about the significance of this part of the film. Well, my job was to investigate the crimes. And we, the, the truth commission in my country, identify the victim. So I don't need lawyers doing legal arguments. I need people with empathy for the victims. That's why I was thinking young people will be better. And Julio accepted. Estracera agreed with me. And then we built a team of very young people from 20. The younger was 20 and the older was 27. So that was, was amazing. In four months, we were able to, to produce the evidence needed to convict the generals. So talk about that. Talk about what happened, um, how it was that you came along with Julio Stracera, who is no longer alive today, to prosecute the generals and ultimately put several of them that one in general prison that, uh, Trump uh, for killed life. Moran. He has the same uh, Well, Julio was basically in charge. He needed help. <laughs> and we knew each other from this university, so he invited me to support him. And he gave me the task. I need to lead the investigation. And we cannot use the police, because the police was involved in the crimes. So what we did, we used the victims to produce the evidence. So the Truth Commission identified the victims. We first select the best cases. Then we call the victims, the survivors, asking more details. Who saw, who watched you when you were abducted? There was habeas corpus or, or criminal proceedings. So we collect all these documents <laughs> and prove well the abduction. Then the victim told us about their own torture and how they watch other people being tortured. And then we show the killings showing people who were abducted before and then appear dead. And the army recognized they killed them, but they invented there was they killed them in a in a in a fight in a battle, and we show it was a fake battle. So these people were abducted before. In this way, in four months, with this group of young kids who were just meeting the victims, meeting the people, receiving them in the office, we produced the evidence. We produced two thousand witnesses in four months, and that transformed the, the case because the, the witness testimonies. Ex- Transform the perception <laughs> of the of what happened to the dictatorship. It's really cool. I think the one of my favorite things about the film. Yeah, you know, we talked about on Adventure Month. We talked about the whole. Uh, 
you know, getting the team together montage. Right. Yes. I, and, and I think there's, there's a lot of movies that uh, types of films that they'll utilize that, but I really like the, first of all, the whole thing of like, yeah, we can't use any, like <laughs> any lawyers with any experience. Cause they're not going to be on our side. They don't either don't want to risk their career. Well, it's it's kind of like uh, in the beginning of suicide squad where there's like the, you know, right. the, the, the <laughs> team, or whatever, that's like the decoy team. I feel yeah. like this is like the, I mean, they succeed. Yeah. But this is almost like the decoy team of, uh, you know, Argentinian lawyers. <laughs> well, cause it, cause they know that like you have to have a big team for all the stuff that they're going to throw at you. And that you're like, if you have like young folks, they're going to be more likely to kind of throw their bodies on the wheels. Right. They, yeah. they, rather than um, people with families and people with like, you know, a career and like a house and, and whatever those, what do they got to lose? They're making, they're like making minimum wage as a clerk, you know? Yeah. And, and the movie was no, that scene is legit she, funny too. Yeah. <laughs> well yeah it's great because it's like you get like like the gamut of of just you know i, I mean you said for suicide squad it's almost like deadpool too when he's uh <laughs> yeah he's picking his x-force because every <laughs> and i love the one guy just being completely Law sarcastic and order, all of his all answers clerks. yeah 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 absolutely and and, and special, like, special clerks unit or something <laughs> well yeah because that because that one guy and it's sort of like does the equivalent of like is he does he is that for real it's like no no he's, he's <laughs> he's joking he's joking because <laughs> they also just serious to, like dude. interrogate their politics which you know i mean yeah. I, i'd be kind of fascinated like if there was one guy that was just like yo i'm a fascist and they're like oh well, that's right, what they, they, the guy's like well i'm a soldier so like you're a soldier like no no i'm not, I'm not no and which is like dude don't it's like when they uh when they when they talked about choosing the uh the oj uh jury and they're like yeah they're like we can't have he, they're black like a black person can't be on this jury or they're gonna like oj right. they're like oh this person has a picture literally with oj uh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that but it's uh the peronist version <laughs> so i liked i like first of all that they stated the case <clears throat> if you will of why it needed to be an ensemble right that this was going to be too much they had so many things going against them already not the least of which is like it's just by nature like military figures are going to be respected whether they did horrible atrocities or not they're the military it's 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 like it's baked into who they are and what that our is beautiful troops they're disrespecting <laughs> our big beautiful they're, they're from central casting <laughs> they're very masculine very masculine. Um, but i think that is but but hold on, well, hold on. Didn't you, you didn't let me get to the actual point i was making okay, okay, the actual okay. the actual you jump you interrupt me with the trump impression yeah, r.i.p <laughs> uh the, the uh the, but the thing is like you 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 it's it's a case as to why like it's going to be such an uphill battle because everyone's going to either be against them or not want to take the risk so you get these kids these these people that are like aspirationally wanting to do something important with the law do something of consequence, even and like are willing to like you know sh sh shovel papers and like you know get faxes and stuff if, if they need to do that. This so grunt well, administrative work in the uh, in the old attorney general's office. <laughs> so if you're asking them to do the same thing, but to do it for something that's like oh this could be like the biggest case of the of this country's entire existence, and it would be something that would actually acquire some social justice of which they all have a vested interest in. I think showing that and showing like how they assemble that team, and it's all coming from a guy that's like the least likely dude to be like a bulldog about this stuff even as, yeah. even his, even his wife even his wife is like dude like, you're really? like i i thought you were just some like i thought you were boring i thought you were dull yeah <laughs> she's like it's amazing yeah, I think everyone the english translation like, had really? had it as uh the, the english dub was uh cranky uh <laughs> yeah, yeah well, but I, like, he's, he's not the guy he's not he's not a bulldog he's like you grumpy right? he's, it's like I thought you were just gonna be a grumpy something or another. Grumpy. Yeah, you I like just want to keep his head down and, and a you grumpy know. Gus. I'll go with. I'll be like, I thought you were gonna be a grumpy Gus. Uh. <laughs> no, but right. he, he just wanted to keep his head down and and get the you know uh just not cause any trouble. And uh, here he is causing Which I, the most trouble. <laughs> I wish I kind of wish we were covering living because uh, the 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 Bill Nye character. Um, and same in a hero is, is very much a, like just head down like I'm just I doing put the thing. It under the cold tap, <laughs> <laughs> and it would be it'd be a great capstone to like reference that. But I know I'm the only one that's that's seen that. But it's the same thing as in a hero where it's like like you know they, he has a, a, a cancer diagnosis and they decide to do something meaningful with his life with the job that he has rather than just like you know letting grinding himself be grinded down and then also grind on everyone else with it. But I think that's a natural state for something like this. If you're like a mid level uh judiciary official of some kind you know like you're told over and over again oh, don't stick your head up you'll get it'll get chopped off 
And for something like, about, hey, do you um, want to prosecute like <laughs> Do you well, want to prosecute and, oh basically most of the standing military? Yes, yeah, sounds great. There's no possible way that could backfire on me. <laughs> I, I think I think it's really interesting that the uh the headscarves, right? Like he's like, Well, we can't oh, have right. any ideology. And the women yeah. show up with the headscarves, and each headscarf has like a missing person or like yeah. uh, you know, the, the name of like a person. And it, it's it's kind of yeah. heartbreaking when he has to tell them, like, hey, like you can't you can't wear these in court. Uh we gotta we gotta well, keep the, it. The, uh, abuelas, the abuelas de plaza de me, uh de mayo um were a fascinating group because like they, they actually were fighting for their grandkids to back because remember like i said that those kids were like stolen from their parents that after they were killed and then adopted and so they're, they're actually trying to like get parental rights as grandparents so they actually had to develop technology through uh dna testing which didn't exist at the time to to, no, to, no to find it in me <laughs> yeah yeah no no this this is what they did like you know which is incredible like like one of them just happened to see an article about uh dna testing like wait you could do parental dna testing but can you do grandparents and the the scientists in america were like let's let's find out yes yeah, and they, they developed it and, yeah. and it's it's absolutely incredible that that uh uh you know that that's where you that are not from. the grandfather a bunch of grandmothers <laughs> my, uh, and my, uh you know fighting my for, grandparents to find my grandparents uh maury show they're like <laughs> You are not. You are not the grandfather. <laughs> and then there's and there's Forrest with the Mori Povich joke, uh, stepping all over whatever Andy was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, important parts of history, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we got jokes to get to. Uh, yes. but no, I think that's incredibly notable, and it's also notable that, like, again, because because remember when they're building their case, they have to look as. They, they have to be judicious, as I suppose the word, right? They 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 have to not look like they have like a vendetta because what's their entire argument? Well, they have a vendetta against us. Like, you know, this is we don't recognize this course authority. Every one of them says it. They all they all say it from the beginning. They say just it repeatedly. like in Z. we do. Well, yeah, which is, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a it's good a standard. To... <laughs> I mean, uh, homage. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's I love, something that like they the actually general, do, too. I love the generals. Well, and, and this happened in the actual trial, too, if you look at it. But they all marched in in the line, like a straightforward line. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they all stood like this, like they were. <laughs> yeah, most of them in uniform as well, which which is yes. which is also a choice. And that's it, it's an intimidation tactic. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why Oliver North wore his uh, uniform in the uh, the Iran Contra uh, trials. Sure did. Didn't it? It's, 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 it's somewhat, it's considered distasteful, but not, you know, it, it, it's, it's not. And nowadays, like it doesn't even matter anymore. For the longest time, it was not considered uh, cool to do. Uh, yeah. You know, unless you're Mr. Gaddafi, take that off. Take that. <laughs> but I think that it's, it's amazing that they, they spend such great pains to kind of dress the, the court in such a way because they know that they, they have the goods on them as long as they can get people to testify. Again, that comes back to what I was saying earlier about this being the beginning of the 24 hour news cycle, uh, cable news, satellite television, et cetera, et cetera, that they know. And they were only thinking about it in terms of like, get this out to the people that whose families have been done wrong and get it out to everyone else. So they can know to be wary of these guys to maybe not bring them back in immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like in, the, in like a year or two because they're actually horrific and it's amazing that you get to see the scope and scale of that change within the people actually doing it during the course of the movie just like they did through the course of the case where you get to see like oh no we're, what we're doing is a lot bigger than that and you also notice it with like literally the the death threats and, and again the in in direct and indirect like when they have like the car that they explode that has like the the photos the uh the, not photos the um the, the handbills, the flyers with like, you know, the, the two guys on them and sort of, you know, sending messages like that, just intimidation tactics, which, you know, uh, obviously had to be more physical these days. You used to get like a, <laughs> you just get a, a J hive hive together and you can get, get at him on Twitter. Yeah. But that's Hunta, uh, Hunta hive. The, the um, Thank you. I guess the dirty war, <laughs> like during the Clinton administration, I guess they declassified all the CIA documents that showed that the U.S. had involvement yeah. with their dirty war, and uh, you know was trying to. Huh, get they the did military. shocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, who could have predicted that? Yeah, I mean, like God, what what was what wasn't the CIA up to in in, uh, so, in almost in Southern California, so, South America? <laughs> <laughs> maybe southern california too i don't know uh yeah i mean that like uh i mean we've all read confessions of uh economic hitman right 
Have you all read that book? I mean, that's I was gonna say. Actually, it, 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 no, I haven't. <laughs> oh, it's me. It's amazing. I think I've. I think I've. I'm familiar I've, with. I've it, heard it. Seven. I've heard it like summarized and like uh like in in other books, right? Like I've heard the references uh to it, and I've heard Michael Brooks talk about it. I don't think I don't think I've yeah. read the actual book. Well, the, the, yeah, this is John Perkins' book. He basically outlines that like it, it, it went beyond just uh you know direct action and electoral influencing, but like just you know. Uh, <sighs> using all the tools of like you know what eventually became standard operating procedure for things like the world bank to uh, influence elections and, and governments and, and whatnot it, it's quite a it's actually a very interesting read because the, the guy basically did have a crisis of conscience, came out to and decided to tell a story but yeah it's just i mean at no point ever was there any country that we weren't the cia wasn't actively <laughs> getting up to nonsense and and, and before that just american corporations like loaning out fucking troops like that's uh sure. so I, was, I was recently reading like the the smedley butler like there's a book that just came out about him and it's yeah. just like uh you know he's like wait a second i'm working for corporations not even the american government and they're like yeah 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 no, <laughs> it's a stateless uh <laughs> yeah this is a stateless queue well think of like fordlandia Right uh, in in Brazil, yeah, you guys familiar with that? That's the uh, the the Henry Ford like decided to build a um, a city in uh, South America. It was basically a uh, a plantation slash city designed to look like utopian like America, and like in the mid middle of the Brazilian jungle. <laughs> and the, the idea is because he wanted his own supply of rubber, uh, and, and he wanted to be right there. Congress Congress uh, passed the Humphrey Kennedy Amendment to the Foreign Assistance Act which prohibited all sales, loans, and training in Argentina. Um, and then Carter uh, went through with it. And Reagan, the second he came in, uh, mended fences instantaneously with the uh, Argentine junta <laughs> in 1981. Yeah, well. <laughs> well happy, but uh, happy birthday, Mr. Reagan. You know, yeah. yeah. Rest, <laughs> rest in hell. Uh, but I think that I, I think the way this this movie is successful is it, it doesn't try to give you all of the context. In fact, it kind of you find out a lot of the context uh, for this time period in the course of the movie, like along along with either the characters or with the characters, you know, explaining aspects of like how they're going to approach things in a certain way. And if you if you're one to actually pay attention and pick up context clues, like I get it. Some people just they hear courtroom stuff and it's like you know a sleep aid. It's like immediately falling mm -hmm. asleep. But if you're into that kind of thing, like it, it's really good. And, and I agree that if you do know all of the other things along with it, oh, they didn't mention this, they didn't mention that. Yeah, did you want this to be an eight hour movie? Like, yeah, like, what are you looking for? Like, and again, so, like I want to see the exact law, regulation, number of the uh, <laughs> thing that they broke. In each case, I want you to read yeah. the charges, all of them, not even like just the, the interesting <laughs> ones, the boring ones too. And I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I just really, I want the, the full courtroom experience. I'm actually upset that it took 50 minutes to get to the courtroom. Uh, yeah. You know, I just wanted to go right in there. <laughs> it's and, very upsetting. Uh, <laughs> and immediately start reading these legal briefs aloud in a monotone voice. Sir, yeah, sir, you cannot just, uh, you know, have a hunter. This is genocide, sir. <laughs> That's the dub we needed. There's <laughs> nothing in this rule book that says a dog can commit genocide. <laughs> Airbud rule. <laughs> Air, Airbud does a hunta. <laughs> but yo, by the way, I made an Airbud joke on tour, and we discovered there's like four or five Airbud movies. I'm like, how is there? Oh yeah, no, there's a series. Movie? There's a series. I, could, I sometimes he plays other games. Uh, in, yeah, in yeah, that, that's what I was saying. So, so it's like it's like 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 you run out of games eventually, right? Like, is he's gonna be doing like uh Cricket. like like water polo at some point? Like, what like, what is he? <laughs> what's he gonna be doing? This dog is he's like the uh, he's like the Bo Jackson of regular games he heads but, over to he heads over to england and he's doing the old cricket uh you know i, I like the idea of Airbud go cia yeah. <laughs> that they in the rule book that says it can't be a special <laughs> operative be a dog agent bud we are sending you in to the uh you Oof. know the the <laughs> the middle of cambodia you must take this explosive that looks like a it looks like a basketball <laughs> so don't hit it like you would a basketball just you yeah. know just uh and, and all you, you have to do it. is dunk it <laughs> And once you dunk it, it'll explode and, and kill the enemy. Oof. <laughs> there, there are missed, five Air Bud movies. He misses and then and he there's... blows up like a, a village in fucking Cambodia. Oh, God, <laughs> he man. just, he can't stop dunking. Like, it's all he knows. It's, it's like asking the sun not to shine. I mean, it's, look, that's me too. But there are, there are even more spinoffs. I can't stop dunking on people on Twitter. You know, it's like, uh, it's my lifeblood. 
There are nine spin-off Air Bud movies. Not nine not after the nine. five Air Bud movies. Air, yeah, yeah, there's Air, Air Bud and Furious. Oh, uh, we're, yeah, we're like, like the it's like I, I wanna yeah, I wanna see Air Bud and uh Fast and the Furious uh merge. That crossover. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, let me see here. There was a uh, uh, what, what, uh what what is that ninth movie like? Like, does it even does it even try or is it just like well Santa Air Bud, mine is Santa Air Bud gets used to it's nice. it's their children the ninth movie. teaming it's, up with it's, Santa it's Claus. Like, <laughs> They're like they're like That's Airbud nice. has a small sprain and we can't afford to fix it. We're gonna have to <laughs> euthanize him. I was gonna the say he was playing hacky sack. That's way darker than I was thinking. But like, <laughs> no, no, the fourteenth one, the, uh, this uh, his children get Dude. superpowers. Beer beer pong. Airbud becomes a fucking alcoholic. <laughs> it's, it's it's like a <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like drunks with he Richard stays. Lewis, but with Airbud instead. That's that's a joke for like four people, by the way. But it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Like Matthew film guy would appreciate that joke and maybe air, air hockey bud you could do yeah. that but there are two movies about Santa Paws Santa, Santa Paws is in the expanded Air Bud universe yes alright well I guess yeah. that they're like eh, I don't know put him in a Santa suit followed by the Air Bud Golden Receiver Golden, golden Receiver Air Bud <laughs> that, that is part pop. two alright Air Bud Fetch and uh, Air Bud spikes back where he tackles volleyball. Spikes back. Oh, then then it goes to the uh, the spinoffs. Oh, so those are just the, the those are the in canon films. And then yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I want Air in Buddy, on the these writer nobody, rooms, by the way. Nobody. This has to be the um, most fun writer rooms ever. <laughs> Space buddies. Santa. Like, I don't buddies, know. Uh, he's playing spooky, golf suddenly. Spooky buddies. Oh, so they get CGI, I guess, at, at some point, like fully. Uh, uh, okay. Treasure buddies. We should have watched that for Adventure Month. Um, yeah, and, uh, the super buddy, and then there's a bunch of other spinoffs. There's uh, like the, yeah, the Santa Claus film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I can only imagine someone randomly stumbling into our Argentina 1985 episode about this sobering <laughs> trial of a military Air Bud and getting Air Bud discourse. <laughs> it's Air Bud 1985. Air Bud 1985, exactly. Uh, wow, that is much more information about Airbo than I expected to get into. Um, <laughs> I can't, there's nine of those movies, huh? Wow. Yeah, you know, I have the yeah. show rereading parts of this book <laughs> so I could discuss it, and here I am pulling up the Wikipedia page on Airbud. Yeah, exactly. You got priorities. Let's, uh, here. let's do a little more of this, uh, you know, this old fashioned uh, <laughs> let's, let's dunk on some military juntas just like Airbud. <laughs> Airbud 9 11. <laughs> Well, he really he spiked that plane right into the building. Never forget. <laughs> that Airbus, would be the never. subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who are not familiar with the history of Argentina and the so-called Dirty War, if you can take us back to the time of the coup that led to the disappearances, torture, rape of so many the dirty war, of course, the famous from the uh, late porn 70s hub only into fans the battle. early 80s. Yeah. And then how you came at this moment in 85 to be able to prosecute those who led this coup. Well, uh, Argentina in the 70s had guerrilla groups. Uh, but in 73, with democracy was back. But the guerrilla were still fighting, and they were. Uh, That's right. right Marx is back, Jack. Fighting. So people was <laughs> absolutely afraid of violence, and in a country with fifty years of coup d'état, people were supporting the idea of the army in charge of the government to control violence. And that's why in seventy six, when the military junta took power, they were supported. My mother supported them brutally, totally. So, but in nineteen eighty three. When democracy was back, one of the candidates, Alfonsín, proposed to investigate the generals. In a country with 50 years of coup d'etat, no democratic government ended its term for 50 years. And Alfonsín said, look, we need to end this coup d'etat cycle. We need to investigate the generals. And people support him. 52% of people support him. And that's why the trial happened. This was this political environment. And then when the, we prosecuted the generals, after they were tried some military mutants, but people reacted and said no. So basically, the impact of the junta trial was not just unveil the crimes committed by dictators, was 
transforming democracy. People feel democracy is, is my system, I will protect it. And that's why the film, Santiago Metro film is so important because 40 years later, the new generations, the young kids are learning about this through the movie. So as a prosecutor, I had to prevent future crimes. And Santiago Mitre is doing that 40 years later. That's why honor Santiago Mitre. Luis Moreno Acampo, according to State Department documents that were released in 2004, almost 20 years ago, then Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and Argent told the Argentine uh, foreign minister, if there are things that have to be done, you should do them quickly. We won't cause you unnecessary difficulties. Explain what he was talking about, because the majority of the people who died in Argentina or were disappeared were in those early years. We're talking about tens of thousands of people. What did the U.S. have to do with it? Well, Argentina was a battlefield of the Cold War. The Cold War was cold in the north, but it was hot in the south. And Argentina was one of the hottest places. So that's why Kissinger was saying, OK, they are basically the dictators in South America were proxy forces for US to control guerrillas. But interestingly, Jimmy Carter came later. And Jimmy Carter was trying to use human rights against the Soviet Union. And then, to be consistent, he also attacked Argentina. So Jimmy Carter became the biggest enemy for Argentine dictatorship. So. It's the, you, people in the U.S. have to understand U.S. foreign policy has impact, positive or negative. That's right, Argentina. And, you and need we, to, you need to get these pinged up. U.S., we are watching that. <laughs> and Henry Kissinger? <laughs> no, Henry Kissinger was basically supporting the idea of the armies in the South control the guerrillas. As today, we are happy that the armies how these, in, how these in, Egypt, alive looking in like different that. places control Al-Qaeda and Islamic terrorism. It's the same. We're in a new Cold War. And we need to, that's why Argentina <laughs> 1985 is not just on the past, it's on the future. And if you can talk about the role of the mothers of the disappeared in Argentina, when Democracy Now! went down to Argentina and broadcast, um, we went to the plaza where the mothers um, marched. And there is this moving scene in the film where um, where Prosecutor Stracera turns to the women in the courtroom uh, and asks them, not exactly directly, to take off their scarves because the judges said you could not have banners in the room and they wore these scarves around their heads that said they were the mothers of the disappeared. And you saw it broke his heart to say this. Well, that's real. That historically happened. Both of us were asking the mother to remove the scarf. But it's about fair trials. The judges were trying to be sure no one can complain they were biased. And that is very, very important, because it's not just the trial was effective, it was fair, it was fair. The, the defendants have the rights, they present evidence, and the judges were trying to show doubt, impartiality. And I think that is part of the legacy that the movie is showing. The movie is showing not just the horrors, the movie is also showing a fair trial. And it's in more important, it's not just a court film, it's showing the impact of the court in society. And that is the beauty of the film by Santiago Mitre. Santiago is using families, my family, a military family, a Stracera family, a normal family, and the victim family to show the impact of the lack of flu in Argentina. Luis, I want to get to that, your family. You mentioned your mother. Uh, she was a supporter of Videla, the general. She went to church. The... <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like that's a good place to uh, take a break from this, this because it's another, like, seven minutes or something. But I do want yeah, to... Yeah, I mean, Amy it. Goodman's great. Uh, Amy Goodman, come on, movie next, Raviganza. Uh, <laughs> we, we could talk but... about Don Knotts. Was, uh, his last on-screen performance was at Air Buddies. No. <laughs> I was I was gonna say like let's give the airbud discourse a pass before that, but uh, no, no, but no, there was just 
Yeah, there we it's go. Not Airbud. Uh, that's uh, Airbud. Uh, Airbud yeah. joins the dirty war. It's a dirty war, and you know, dirty dogs out here. Uh, it's, it's a dirty war, but someone's got to dunk it. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> You'll be here all night. Uh, yeah. So, but back to the actual film. I, I you know, it's wild that. It's wild that a film like this would be made. Um, and then it's also, I think, encouraging in a let's not see history repeat itself kind of way uh, to have it be well received. And, and, and for me, I'm always like I, the thing, the two things I always talk about is, first of all, horror movies always excluded from like awards, always, unless it's like, you know, the the, the Golden Chainsaw, whatever the Fangoria Awards are or something along those lines. Uh, and, and, you know, and we talked about like nope being excluded this year and whatnot. But it's like there's a certain type of movie that everyone it, it, it by nature of the genre it it imbues importance somehow into it, and I think a more cynical person could look at *Semi Garden Scene* in 1985 and say like, "Oh, this is just like an Oscar bait movie." I don't think so. Yeah, I think this is. You really think in Argentina they're thinking about the Oscars though? Like, no, I, no, I'm, no, 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 not, not at all. I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about like from the from the fact of how it's presented to American audiences. Again, oh, sure. From American all right. perspective. But I mean, that doesn't really. Yeah. Yeah, it, it absolutely matters. Like, like, oh, it's like no, I'm not like saying a, it doesn't. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not saying that doesn't film. matter. I'm just saying like that's right. not what I was thinking about with the the, pr the purpose of making it right. Because in America, like Oscar bait movies, a lot of times are movies they make literally for the point. And I don't think that's the point. But of this but, but if all you know is like there's a movie called this and it's about like some depressing. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You're not and, necessarily and, gonna and have that plot, film. and it's a plot that you would like 100 expect for uh you know be like oh of course it's about you know the 1985 uh trial in in Argentina right. like. <laughs> Well, again, so the fact that it's made by an Argentinian filmmaker uh, about something that happened in Argentina, I think, is is very important. And it's it's again, the actual case did as much uh, for history um, as the movie can maybe do in in, in some aspect to, to echo that. To literally just name the people that were disappeared, because that's the thing is it wasn't even just they were they were killed; they were just literally disappeared. That is that is the term that was used. And that's the correct term for it. Yeah, and it some was of them, they that's, what happened. Okay. That, that, that's what happened to uh, Hector Germain uh, Osterheld, who's who's one of my favorite comic book writers, wrote The Eternauts, um, uh, which is a, it's an incredible graphic novel. Go go, go find the uh, – that they just released it in English. It's it's phenomenal. Uh, and it came out in 1958, and it is, like, better than any sci-fi comic you'll ever read. Uh, yes. But And the artwork's gorgeous. But but anyways, um, he he actually um, uh, was a, a outspoken socialist – when the junta was uh, taken over, he's like, "Oh shit, I'm in trouble." He he said to his family, "Goodbye." Disap you know, went up to the mountains and got Don't disappeared. Cry for me, Argentina. And his daughter, his daughter actually went looking for him, and she uh, was actually killed in prison. Like we know what happened to her. We don't know what happened to him. Yeah. Well, and, and some of these people in this movie, right? The stories are like, "Oh, I was kidnapped and forced to work somewhere," or "I was kidnapped yeah. in a car and put into like a labor camp." Like, uh, so you right. you'd have to assume that like you know some of the disappeared came back or you know would be released or something, and some of them probably just got fucking killed. Well, and the people that did that did make it back would be like, "Yeah, nobody's gonna believe you. Don't bother telling anyone." Yeah. And if you are, and you know, there were mass graves. You cannot. You cannot, uh, you not, cannot trust the police. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's like like what they like it's in the preview, right? Where we talk about like, you know, and by the way, the, the police are basically in on it. So don't expect any help from them. <laughs> don't ask Sting for shit. Um, yeah, totally an ACAP movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to I want to hear about the mother because that's a really affecting scene in this, I think. Yeah, he's no, the, it's he's absolutely on the phone with his mother. And she's like, look, I thought you were a fucking liar and a communist. But you know what? I believe you. Because after go, uh, the entire film going through, like, oh, you know, we're never going to get someone like your mother. Uh, yeah, you know, literally. They're, they're, like, they're never going to be convinced. The if your mother is yeah. the gauge for, uh, you know, who we have to, uh, you know, convince. Like, your mother, whose great-great-grandfather was, like, the, you know, the pinnacle of the fucking um, Argentine military, like, hierarchy or whatever. Like, not her, but, like, normal people. Like, you know, like the guy that owns yeah. the Buenos Aires bodega. You know what I mean? Like, that guy. She, she's the MAGA hat like, guy that you're not trying to convince. <laughs> As the conservative religious grandma goes, so goes the rest of the country. I think that's how the saying goes, right? Well, I mean, she's she's like the. I, I think they're so they're so uh, rich and powerful that family, right? Like she she has to be like the um, uh, fucking uh, Betsy DeVos kind of like uh, level of right. Sure. 
Church yes. as Fidela, and you used her as a monitor, a barometer of how Argentina was responding to the trial, that they could actually watch? Well, the, the, in those days, as Santiago explained, the, the, the scenes were without sound. So my mother was reading the newspaper. My mother read the most conservative newspaper in the country, but the, the paper, the newspaper was showing what happened. And my mother, exactly the day after Adriana Calvo de la Borde testified, my mother, at the movie show, called me. She said something nicer. She said, I still love General Videla, but you are right. He has to go to jail. So that's what she said. So my monitor Sorry, was General saying Bidella, very, very early. So that's why we keep, because for me, <laughs> we need to convince people like my mother, who did not like the trial, people who were supporting Videla. We, that was for me the target. The movie, in some way, is doing that. The movie is reaching 100% of the people. You know, in, in one month, the movie was watched by, by 1 million people. The president, the vice president of the country are talking about the movie. So the movie tra transformed the memory of the country. Luis Moreno Acampo, we are speaking to you in the midst of uh, Brazil's January 6th. It's January 8th, to be exact. On Sunday, thousands of um, the far right former president uh, Jair Bolsonaro supporters overrunning the Capitol, the uh, Capitol building, the Supreme Court, the presidential palace. Your thoughts on parallels to what happened in Argentina 40 years ago? Well, the most clear part of what happened in the U.S. two years ago, no? That's the most clear three years ago. So I think democracy is at risk everywhere. So because social media transforming the memory and understanding. So we need to understand that. That's why the movie is not just about Argentina 1985. The movie is about avoid Argentina 1976 in Argentina, so I, the movie is about, about dictatorships in Argentina, in Brazil, and in the U.S. The democracy is at risk, and the movie is helping us to understand it. Yeah. I mean, those that uh, do not uh, remember history are doomed to repeat it, right? Is that how the saying goes? Something like that. Close enough. <laughs> Good enough for government work. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's poignant. Those who, think I remember, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I appreciate I didn't get a snap correction on that one. No, I no, gave, but it was like I, I gave you one, but I was muted. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that should be the well, case. You, well, you the said, time. you said, I think, or whatever, and I was like, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> wish I loved anything as much as people love snap correcting on this show. But I think that, like, uh, the, I, I think that it's again, it is hammers home the point. Well, this is a very successful movie by Argentinian standards, right? I mean, it was, yeah, like, I think like something like that. Well, it was something like it was it was the most successful Ar Argentinian movie in a long time, but it also was like one of the most um, watched in general. Like, it was the top ten, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that was before it was being nominated for Oscars and winning Golden Globes and all that stuff. So it's encouraging. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see more movies like this. Yeah, it's funny that uh, main dude, prosecutor guy, um, he's in everything. And in, in Argentina, like he's he's like the <laughs> he's, he's the that guy of uh, Argentinian cinema. He's like he's in everything. Um, so this is this is the president of uh, Argentina, I guess, seeing the movie, this, uh, the premiere. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Estoy de acuerdo. Porque quiero que en Argentina nunca más sea nunca más. Eso quiero. Quiero vivir en una sociedad sin violencia. Quiero esa sociedad de la que lo estrasera. Quiero que se ponga final a la violencia política de una vez y para siempre. Quiero que nos respetemos. Así que Yo la verdad me han, he, he disfrutado mucho, me he emocionado mucho con la película, no voy a negarlo. Tenías razón, Gaby. Ah, oh, that's pretty y, cool that he's there. Y me alegro yeah. mucho haberlo visto con jóvenes. No clue what he's saying. 
Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I took German. <laughs> I still got nothing. But... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they let you uh, translate on this. Um, hold on. No, no. The deep state. Oh. Auto translate. Yeah, I used to do this uh, with a with a Russian synth band that I liked uh, until the guy passed away. <laughs> to see what he's saying. But, but he used to make these, these uh, adorable videos. I'm very glad to have seen it with uh, young people. It seems important to them. The young people understand that through a film like the one we have, just seeing the importance of living in a democracy. And he says, uh, this film is an act. It is a class on democratic education uh, because I think it is, uh, I think you have seen a moment in Argentine history. Argentina is recognized in the world. It is the only country that judged genocidal agents uh, respecting the laws that existed without removing them from their national judges and giving them all the rights, the defense and guarantees to oblivion. Pro I don't know. It's a, uh, it's not always the best translation. <laughs> no. No, no, it's, it's good. Yeah, we're basically it's talking right, about yeah. it being Im yeah. important for uh, overall. Because Argentina has human rights. Human right, yeah, that a few countries yeah. have. I thought it was uh, so important to see it. That's why I wanted to see it with you. How the I think what the gentleman meant to say was <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> historical memory, consolidating a democracy, and uh, knowing what happened to us and never repeating it again. Hay diputados negacionistas que dicen que no existió lo que pasó acá. Cuando lo escuchamos decirle a los negacionistas, sos un farsante. Nos estás confundiendo. Yeah, and you know, it's well. It's, it's, I guess uh, I guess there's still there's still deniers. He's saying in the in, in some circles. Yeah, probably. I mean, it makes sense. Like there, I mean, there's going to be there's going to be like 2020 election deniers. Like you know, when we're all <laughs> one foot in the grave. Yeah. Uh, you know, my kids will be fighting them. <laughs> so some people, you know, they make that a whole identity and that's, it's, uh, you know, it's what, it's what it is for that. I, I, I love that. I think that's great. Um, I think that that's shows why this kind of film is important. And I don't get why, like, I think it's important that it's a film and not just a documentary. I, I think yes. that when it's a documentary, like, like, look, we love like all that, all those like, you know, dry, like, horrible here's everything that's terrible that's happened in the world sort of documentaries right but that's a harder pull for people and the fact that like, you can watch this on amazon prime it is like it's legit funny too yeah there are moments of deep hilarity there's also some incredibly jacked up stuff that happens uh, you yes. know but like i i think as a film it works and I, I think it's it's been interesting seeing like the discourse on it where uh you know there there's the the biggest complaints are oh it doesn't go far enough it doesn't do the thing that i wanted it to do it's like well but the thing is like it, it does this very special thing which allows you to get a window into this world why it's important and it shows you why it's important and if you want to learn more about that great you have every resource in the world to like go find out like all the history you want go do that it doesn't need to be laid out for you in the movie you don't need to know that yeah i mean i mean like like i think alan arco had a, a good uh cr a critique of the movie like you know, he, he enjoyed it, but he's just like, it could have used a little bit more tension. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will say, I mean, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that that's a, that's a very valid argument. I, I, I don't necessarily completely agree with it, but I see where he's coming from. I think the ending is fantastic. And I think yes. the ending, and, and we can, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, because I think we're talking about, uh, uh, Alberto Fernandez, right? <laughs> well, no, I mean it's interesting that he's explicitly a Peronist, right? Like that yeah. ideology yeah. has man has managed to, uh, you know, go for for literally fucking decades. Which is a great uh, scene too. Whenever they bring up that party in the movie, it's just like, yeah, it's like you know, yeah. it's like, that's like how they reveal if the character's his son, right? <laughs> yeah, just oh yeah. By the way, <laughs> it's like I don't want to hear your fucking book report answer. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Uh I think that w the way it works. So, so as I mentioned that Ricardo uh, Darren do the guy who plays uh, Susera, he's um, he, he's like a dude that's like a known Argentinian, that guy. Like he's like just he's in everything. He's been in like most Argentinian film for like last 20 years. Like he's he's an he's a known commodity for that. But I like that, like, you know, the, the schlubby middle management of it all. 
uh, really shines through in this one where you're like, what's this guy? Like, what's like when you start off, you, you're not even clear if he's the protagonist or if he's like someone that's like going to be like on the wrong side. Of it. And he's literally avoiding the, uh, the the guy trying to get him to do this job. Yeah, he's 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 been the artful <laughs> dodger of work. Yeah. <laughs> and you're well, like, he also he also has a great line where he's like, I'm not a kind of I'm not the kind of guy that makes history. And the guy's like, you yeah. could be like you're making yeah. a choice not to be. Right. <laughs> But you get to see that sort of it's just so dull. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see that transformation, like a la hero's journey, right? Uh, yes. but like played small and it's played small and, and because it's not meant to be about him and his journey. No. Which if like if if the dreaded Sorkin had wrote this, it probably would be. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm still doing air bud material, goddamn it. <laughs> uh and I think this film works better because of it. Because again, it becomes an ensemble. It becomes an ensemble. It becomes an ensemble in such a way that, like, you see why he could never, even if motivated to do so, which he clearly isn't to begin with, he could never do it alone. And it can't even just be the team of them. It's like, no, remember, this is pre computer. So they have to, like, dispatch people to different parts of the country, of the country, to, like, find out information that's basically being hidden from everybody. It's and crazy. they throw blood at the window and shit. Or, I don't know. And like or red paint or whatever or something it looked it looked a lot like blood it looked i'm pretty sure it was blood but you know we don't actually know because 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 they don't spend a lot of time on some of those details which is fine they they give you they give you it's a, a hostile work, work environment yeah, that's all you need <laughs> i mean to it's know. not like it's not like they'd probably know what it is either you know what i mean like if you're yeah. experiencing yeah. that it's like oh, oh, it, oh it, it doesn't crazy. matter it's, it's a classic <laughs> like you're digging around where you shouldn't be here's your warning to stop doing that you know, yeah, and, and, and of course, it, Sorkin wrote the scene. You have to explain what that you better is. Not, you better not look into this anymore. I'm going to throw blood <laughs> all over you. <laughs> yeah, there'll be like some soliloquy from some character explaining that. You know, it's probably walking in a hallway while doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, to someone yeah, else. Be, yeah be that's me. Dreadful. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's notable because of all those little small moments where they're just going around and trying to find these people's stories, and then when they find them, convincing them. Yes. Convincing them to put themselves in danger again to testify, whether it just be written testimony or ideally to be testimony on the day of, where you'd be submitted to further scrutiny and uh, further uninvited attention and harassment. And, and like, and you, it, it shows all that. And it shows it in such a way that you, like, you get what a big deal it is. And you get what's a big deal is what people might be like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. Like it's it's understood, it's earned. And then you and get so the rare the rare guy that's like, oh, I'm really gonna do this because yeah. I feel like I, you know, I betrayed everybody that I was uh, comrades with. And then they're like, I don't I don't know if you're the you're yeah. the guy. Like, you, <laughs> you, you took you took a lot of money from them, and like you know, you were kind of employed, and like they're yeah. gonna they're gonna make it seem like you were there on purpose. That's crazy though. That's crazy that he was like uh, kidnapped, and then they're like, well, yeah, you can you work that's here on now. payroll. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> They're like, you know what, you get to work. actually wander around now. We're not going to, you know, you've been doing good. You've been doing good. And we're going to make sure that you get a like custodial job or something. You seem pretty harmless. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's put you on the, let's pay you a shekel. You snitch on right. everybody you've ever known. So, like, yeah. you know, there's nothing yeah, but, left but, for you out there. <laughs> yeah, but, but you, you got us up in stitches when, when it counts, you know. He's a funny <laughs> guy. All right. Okay, great. I had a, I had a good time watching, uh, you know, late night with you. So, you know what? <laughs> That's enough. That's enough, really. I just feel like it's all I'm looking for. Uh, Andy, did you, did you want to read your thing that you wanted to read before we get into Letterbox one liners and kind of start uh, spooning down do this trial? that at the end of at the, the end. Uh, plugs, but uh, uh, if you want me to do that Wait. right now, um, your uh, call. You this, wanted, this, I'm just thinking, this, you can, I, I, you let can... me just do it right now and then I can probably get myself back together because uh, th this is really hard for me. Um, Understood. uh, Oscars always remind me of my friend Eric, uh, who, who took his own life in 2019. And I just want to tell people out there, um, please reach out. Please reach out. People out there love you. Um, uh, you can just call 988 on your cell phone uh, or text if you don't want to talk to anybody. If, if you need help, just please. I think I think like New York has its own hotline. I'm trying to find that. Um, it's nine eight eight. Steve Sastek from uh, Sweep Lake Johnny, who was uh, bandmates with Joe Cannon, who plays with me in Check Engine, is going to come on the show eventually. Uh, he committed suicide 
day before yesterday. And he's the kind of guy that you never would think. You never would think. And it just goes to show you, you never can tell. Yeah, no, yeah. Pe- people really do care about you out there. And, uh, you know, seriously, just, just you know, reach out to somebody. Um, Because, cause like, it still hurts a lot. It never, it never stops. I mean, it hurts because they, they uh, because they touched you in life. And so because yeah. of that, I, I, I was in a bunch of plays with Eric. Um, he, he, uh, um, uh, he, he, uh, uh, did it right before the pandemic. And I didn't find out until deep within the, uh, like last summer. Um, or yeah, yeah. About last summer. If I, if I remember correctly, uh, is when I found out and it was, it was an absolute shock. Um, the, the beginning that, of the uh, pandemic was really uh, was really hard for people. Like like uh, no, this was before the pandemic. You, he, he did it. Oh, this he did is, it back oh, in uh, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um, so, so like like uh, and, and uh, I just didn't know about. It. I mean, his family obviously did, but but uh, uh, people who went to school with him didn't. Uh, you know, um, and and like I said, it's just uh, uh it's been hard because like uh, you know, uh, he he was always very excited about Oscars. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he loved, he loved the movies. Um, he would love to be here with us right now, talking with us, uh, about this movie or any of the other films that we're going to be talking about, because sure, that's yeah. just, 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 that, that was his thing. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, um, uh, it meant so much to him and, uh, every, every year when the Oscars come around, well, not every year, but like this year, it's just been, you know, this big empty hole that, that, uh. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not I'm not thinking fondly of him right now because um, he's not enjoying it with me or anybody. Right. Yeah, that's heavy, man. Um, so, but, you know, you can always as time goes on, try to turn that into like a happy memory of the times that you did have, you know. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's how we deal. It's, it's the act of grieving. Um, so. <laughs> this. <laughs> That does make for a very awkward transition, I will say. Um, to the letterbox, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think there's any way that could have been anything other than what it was, and that's fine. Uh, of, of course, letterboxed is a place for film. It's a uh, oh, it's it's a it's, it's kids cats on cam uh, night apparently. Um, it's a place for film lovers to talk out with and to each other about the films they love, maybe the films that they didn't love, maybe the films they testified before civilian court about. And of course, all of this is uh, it's a bottom up democracy, democracy, people, uh, not just Siskel's and Ebert. So the world can have their say. Everyone gets to have their say. Everyone gets to chime in, uh, talk about the, all, all of the films all the time. Whether they did or did those. I'm watching the cat and I'm getting distracted from my spiel. Um, and, and these, of course, best expressed succinctly. Keep it succinct keep it keep it working in front of your uh in front of the brick wall uh working your tight five these are the letterboxed one-liners for argentina 1985 fire litigation imagine prepping a lawsuit without a computer couldn't be me <laughs> is that is it is that someone that's a lawyer i guess right? I, I would would presume so but yeah <laughs> i mean that's good that is a good point you know computers like everything's got to be like yeah. hard files and you know calling people typewriters pass- Hassling them at the farm that they're working at or wherever that was. <laughs> Where it's like card catalogs. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, uh, industrial systems. industrial workers of the world. <laughs> or something yeah. like uh, you know, like their factory or whatever. Like the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brazil nineteen eighty five, greater than Argentina nineteen eighty five. Look, very different films. I agree, but they're very different films, but also four and a half stars. So <laughs> they're next to each other on the <laughs> shelf though. They are. They are. The, <laughs> the Ava Prone movie with Madonna did not imply such bad things happened. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I remember my it's history true. correctly, it was like before uh, the the bad things. Yeah. Well, no, no one's saying the Madonna should correct the record. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, yes, I am. You still busy looking like an alien. Dude, that plastic surgery is rough, man. I, I get it. Women are not allowed to age gracefully in this culture, but what is happening? Well, I mean, but what what did Madonna ever really do gracefully? I'll say that. Well, okay. That's mm-hmm. okay, but decision to leave better. Okay. <laughs> I uh fair, you know, fair, fair, fair. Yep. There can only be 
there can only be one foreign language movie. I feel like they're very different films, but anyway. <laughs> Solid yeah. watch if you enjoy courtroom dramas or hate fascists. For me, it's both. Word, same. Uh, I'm with you. <laughs> Getting numb to constant threats in your life so you can spit fire in court is one of those baller vibes one can have. Word. Agreed. <laughs> Does finger guns in Espanol? Better call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> well, Saul, Saul would like plant the fucking, uh, you know, the, the thing that, you know, the scene where he's like, uh, you did perjury. You know, this is perjury right now. Yeah. Saul would like plant it in his fucking pocket and be like, uh, can you can you read that for me, please? And be like, yeah. Oh, uh, this is a UN human rights thing that says, uh, actually, they 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 did not um, they did not say what I was saying. They actually said that I was doing a genocide. He's like, Your Honor, I'd like to enter that into the record, uh, genocide and perjury. <laughs> that that's like the uh, re replace somebody in a movie, right? So instead, in this case, instead of the uh, uh, prosecutor uh, Marcos, we have Saul Goodman instead. <laughs> or or you could do it instead of the uh, the fascist. Uh, you know, instead of the fascist uh, defendant, you know, lawyer or whatever that like is fucking mm. creepy, you could have him replaced with uh, that with works Saul. too. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> Law and Order Argentina. <laughs> Cha <-chung. laughs> <laughs> they had a British one for some reason. What? Dun dun is the uh, is the yeah, sound. Yeah, that, what you know, the people from is the sound that the Star torture Black device would make. And the. <laughs> but then they got to wear the little wigs. <laughs> as long as you get to wear little wigs you have ice cubes yes. going around you telling me they tortured people in here <laughs> love to watch an every man take on an industrial military complex even better when it's a guy who looks like the old 80s Dunkin Donuts spokesman or I meant, I oh meant my ice God, tea yes. I meant ice tea not, not ice cube but <laughs> either way either <laughs> it's fine. I, I remember Argen that because, Argentina, uh, um... Argentina SVU <laughs> he's like <laughs> You 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 telling me Don't they kidnap that. people That's in this you. place? <laughs> they do. There you go. Those are, those are the letterbox one liners for Argentina in 1985. You have no idea how hard that was to do, not just hard to do, but doing short notice. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, of course, you can follow the show. That's uh, we did <laughs> we did it, Julio. Uh, always Flacco <laughs> over there. We did we'll it, Julio. Time. You're gonna be the next. I don't know, hero on TV. <laughs> Uh, you can find this have... movie made me root for a fucking prosecutor, by the way. Yeah, this guess the prosecutor you know. was in the right, though. So, yeah, it, it, it does happen. Time, yeah, yeah. He's the one, he's I the mean, one if prosecutor Kamala, uh, not... you know, if she persecuted, uh, if she prosecuted freaking uh, Mnuchin, that would have been a much better. <laughs> she could have persecuted him too, and I would have been okay with that. I mean, I guess <laughs> yeah, could I, use some persecution. I'm with that too. Yes, <laughs> chief persecutor. That's why she we did it, Joe. Out. He's persecuted. Moving, moving to extravaganza. That's your host, Forrest, over there. Uh, I, of course, am Kona Neutron, the chief prosecutor of, uh, not persecutor, of Cinema Excellence at Kona Neutron. Follow me. I'm all over that biz. Uh, high, mid, populist. Uh, take the Criterion Challenge and follow along with me if you feel so inclined. Uh, J. Andrew, Nunca Bas World, assistant prosecutor of film. Yes, that's a job. He's watching all the weirder stuff so you don't have to. Or maybe so you can. Who am I to judge? It's a, it's, it's a whole thing with him. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. And he's, he's the vibe man. Uh, please, 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 J. Andrew World, take us away with the plugs. All right. You're watching us on YouTube right now, so please do the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. And the big ask uh, for, for this video is to watch to the end. Uh, you get that great Kona Neutron song, freshly mixed, by the way. That's right. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that helps other movie fans. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. He, that's literally what he was doing in the studio. He had his like his little <laughs> exactly. microphone set up and was just doing that. It's great. Um, no, Wait, no, are these it's, things it's, on? It's, are these things? On? I'm doing all like visual humor now, like the podcast. People, what's yeah, he doing? These things on? Hello? Yeah, well, he was doing that in the studio. Like, like me, me and Forrest were watching, going like, "Well, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> what's what's he up to? I don't understand. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. But no, no, it came out great, and and you can hear it once again at the end of the video. And like I said, that uh, will help other movie fans find us. So uh, that that right. that um, and hunt us. <laughs> that's that's killers <laughs> no that's hunters sorry hunters, hunters name of that show 
Yeah. That's some of the run around Argentina hunting the Nazis. Very good show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think the first night of night, night of, second, night of the hunter. That's just me. Um, I, I haven't watched the entire second season yet. I haven't been in the mood, so it's it's not bad. Uh, you know, it just yeah. I, it lost something, but that that's that's a whole yeah, first, first season. Yeah, because, pretty, anyway, whatever. Yeah, this is classic yeah, no, no. But yeah, definitely watch, definitely watch hunters. Um, uh, but you can also while you're watching hunters, follow us on Twitter. Um, you could. Uh, as well as uh, Facebook and Instagram. Those are the big sites we're on. You could be hunting for um, clout on any of these sites with us. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we love, I'm the clout we love our hunter. commenter. I'm the clout hunter, and I am going around looking for clout. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey, that's a lot of clout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that engagement's crazy. <laughs> Crikey, that tweet just went viral. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> that may be amongst one of the dumber bits that we've done. I, but I, I Crocky, Crocky, if you look right <laughs> here, it has one million retweets. Now, in, in this game. He's, going right, he's like scrolling on a screen, like pointing <laughs> to them. We call this massive clout. The oh, thing here is you got massive amounts of hashtags. Hashtags. Massive clout. <laughs> Social media maven Steve Irwin, RIP to a legend. Wow, that TikTok <laughs> just did big numbers. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. Follow, follow, follow us on TikTok, I guess. What 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 what, what, what are we doing? I'm gonna subscribe <laughs> right now. No. We're not on TikTok. Um, no way. We not, yeah, no, not. we're not on TikTok. Christina of course is. I know. Christina but we are is. of course she is. Christina is. No, yes. Christina, Christina, that surprises me not at all. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, no, but the three big ones for us is, is uh, right now. Video I did just did numbers. Oh, I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> the drama. He has to sneak, up. He has to sneak <laughs> up on the post. He has to like... He's uh instead of instead of fucking hunting down like crocodiles and shit, he's hunting down like YouTubers, and he's like, <laughs> like that's a lot of clout right there. I I I just found a sound piker. That's a, that's a big sound piker right there. <laughs> yes. Just yeah, Talk Twitter, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> right. Friendster, MySpace, MP3.com. Anything else? Yeah, Mastodon. <laughs> Truth social. Truth social. <laughs> yep. Retruth this. Where uh where Donald Trump just called DeSantis a child predator today, apparently. All right. There was a Great. there was a video of him with uh, a bunch of like young looking girls, and somebody was like, uh, you know, those those are his students, and and Trump fucking retruthed it. Which of course you retruth, you don't uh, you know, you yeah, don't retruth on that. And exactly. he was like, he was like, is that's this the only thing true? I like about it. <laughs> Just something <laughs> yeah. like, is this true or something with like the this face? So he might actually you retruthed uh, it. It has to be true. It's in he, the name. He might he might actually fucking um, DeSantis is a groomer him. Which would be the most ironic thing in the world because DeSantis is running the fucking, you know, grooming thing. It would be pretty amazing if Trump uh, just went, he's a sexual predator. He was a teacher. He was a teacher and he had students. And he, uh, you know, he's a groomer. It's, he's grooming it's, those it's students. It's like when an uh, unstoppable force meets an immovable groomer. I, I want to write I want to write for Trump because I think uh, the perfect name is not the sanctimonious. It's Ron Jr. If he was like, Ron Jr. Ron Jr. He's, he's been very bad. He's been very bad. He's uh he's very disloyal. All right, not not my son, not my son. <laughs> so go on Truth Social, I guess, to go see what that guy said. Crikey, <laughs> <laughs> Truth Social's got a lot of clout. <laughs> I can't get a Truth Social. Air Bud's account, on so, there too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know anyone that's been able to get into that. So I just I, it's all. I mean, I think you have to, you know. I don't know. Have, have I, five old bummer people. jokes ready or something. I don't know. I, I know a few people that are on there with like uh, burner accounts to try yeah. to see what's going on on there because you know people want to know uh, what Trump's up to. I guess they, they just retruth Marjorie Taylor Greene or something now and again, and then just kind of sit back and. And every time Trump has a new like taco bowls only at Mar-a-Lago, taco bowls. <laughs> hey, what else? You know what though? Uh, we we need to get those taco bowls. Because uh, you need to help us with that by joining our Patreon. There we go. <laughs> Look at that transition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real um, men. Yo, all the money from our Patreon <laughs> goes right to Trump uh, Trump Tower Taco Bowls. Uh, oh, you know, dude, the only, the only on Taco Social. Bowls made from the best uh, the best steak, the best chicken, you know, um, Trump chicken. You know, the, the, there's the video of him uh, dancing on SNL. That's 
they they uh yeah. you know they killed that chicken and he is now uh my, my patreon is gonna pay for he, it he choked it and clout my patreon also uh i i feel like i'm getting paid in clout in this in this uh, show mm. but i think it, i think it works the other way around <laughs> yeah i think you're bringing the clout <laughs> yeah, there's a great the show uh, oh i, I was oh, gonna transition oh, to, oh uh, yeah uh, no. it's reversal. yeah Sorry, I, I stepped on it in that time. That's a hell of a characteristic. Yeah. Rocky, Platonic <laughs> Reversal. That show has a lot of subscribers. Let's check it out. <laughs> Actually, you should check it out. Who, who's coming up this week? Uh, this week is Ivan Julian of uh, Richard Hell and the Voidoids. He's got a pretty prodigious solo career as well. Uh, he also, I, I don't remember if he bought or sold an amp to Patrick Walsh, a risk reward, which we learned that oh. when we were at his bar. Uh, this show in this show only. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he played with like a uh, later period of the clash, uh, Matthew sweet, uh, shriek back with, um, uh, Doug Allen of gang of four, um, Isley brothers. Like he's a very interesting fella. So he, that's this week, uh, on proton commercial Thursdays, 8 Eastern, seven central, six mountain, five Pacific. Crocky in Australia. That's, that's pretty late, but we're going to go, <laughs> we're going to go check it out. It's like it's like yeah, it's, it's like 11 a.m. on Tuesday in Australia. Yeah. Well, that's when uh, you know that's when fucking Steve Irwin's drinking a like killing a Foster's, which they don't actually drink in Australia. <laughs> but you know, they, he's, they just, well, he's, just, he's sitting in a cafe, just you know, down in a Foster's, and then he uh, checks his feed, and he's like, "My feed's blowing up right now." All right, <laughs> there's so much clout. <laughs> Dude, I would love I that. I would love to have that. I would love to be the clout hunter. Hashtag day drinking. I would love to be the, the cloud hunter and day drink every day and then check fucking uh, make like a docu series where I just check my feed. And I'm like, yeah, you're just doing what you would <laughs> normally do, but like announcing it in that voice. And and day drinking. I don't think I'd normally be drunk at like 11 a.m., but for that bit, I would be. But it has to be Foster's. <laughs> picking up, picking yes. up, uh, you know, like uh, stage four alcoholism for the bit. You're like, I'm doing it for the, yeah, I'm doing yeah, it for doing the it. bit. It's, it's commitment to the bit oh. <laughs> as your liver fails. There, yeah, no, there's like liver failure, getting liver failure, and the doctor's like, he really committed to the bit. <laughs> uh, you do, have, Canada you Canada do indeed have to hand it to him. He committed to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> that Andy? I, I was in Canada once drinking with a bunch of Australians, and, and one of them we like was really angry about, like, why is everybody making Foster's jokes? Because that was when Foster's commercials were like everywhere yeah. in, in North it's America. It's Australian for beer. Yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, uh, and, and like nobody in Australia drinks it. And it's just like, you know. Well, like, well, like, the guy, people it's, in Newcastle. It's like Crocodile Dundee. What was that guy's name? Like he was not a big deal like outside in, in Australia at the time. Because that... so Paul Hogan? Like, uh, Outback yeah. Steakhouse that doesn't exist in Australia. Yeah, the Blue Banana. <laughs> it actually has no connection to it and it's just a front for the Republican Party. <laughs> it, it is outback steakhouse that company is a major donor to the republican party that's the only thing they actually do they give like hundreds of thousands of dollars um for a for a like a um a grouping of fucking uh restaurants that don't want to raise the minimum wage at all like they want to get rid of the minimum wage so like outback steakhouse is just a front for that at least it's on brand <laughs> minimum wage they we'd love to pay you though. less but we are legally not allowed to <laughs> minimum wage would you like to get paid in clout yeah, yeah, we will pay you in clout, though. Mitch so McConnell's like, I think, I think that the minimum wage should all be in clout. <laughs> the minimum wage has been raised in engagement, but not in actual wages. <laughs> you know, a great way to get clout is to go to neutronfriends.bandcamp.com. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah, I got a new single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking name. It's got a, it's got a great cover too. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's hard. It's hard get. It's hard get. Cry bullies out now. Neutronfriends.bandcamp.com. Yeah, the song about Digital. me getting uh, bullied on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very much of the uh, of the social media age and the, the type of engagements that uh, whether you're a cloud hunter or not that we often engage in. Yeah, right. That great baseline. Crocky, classic, these classic Tony Ash. Are the, these are the cry bullies. Yeah. All right, you got to watch out for them. They'll make you look bad, and you'll lose some of your clout. <laughs> so that's off a record that's coming out in uh fall so it's going to be a little bit for that i think there's probably another single from it uh before then but yeah you can listen to it now only on Bandcamp. uh it'll be on spotify and all the rest of stuff we barely see any money from <laughs> like i think a week and a half so it's a dollar yeah 
It <laughs> it's a dollar. You get all the clout. It's mm. just like your Patreon for um uh yes. Virtual. That's right, it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with up. your Patreon of Chronic Reversal, you get episodes early. So, you know, it's a great reason to sign yep. up. Like that Ivan Julian episode that's coming up on Thursday. Uh, we can we can hear all about it before everyone else. Just like the Kevin Rutmanis episode. Uh, great episode that just went out to the general feed. You could have been already been old news. I already heard about that. I, heard, I listened to that last week. If you uh, just pay a dollar a month, Bernie Sanders style. Uh, <laughs> Also helps pay the bills, you know. And that's how you get clout. You know about it ahead of time. <laughs> if, I, if I did more than a dollar per picture, it'd actually make a decent amount of money. But yeah, I, not I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this for the clout. Clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, just want to say, Christina couldn't join us today, but uh, she, she's out uh, trying to capture Coney. Uh, so go to Coffee Coney 2012. <laughs> coffee 2012 <laughs> would not drink, by the way. Coffee 2012. That seems like that probably no, no, uh, KO dash <laughs> FI uh, coffee. Uh, go buy her a coffee um, uh, while she tries to convince Angelina Jolie. <laughs> uh, Crocky. <laughs> did you tell uh, that? To, to, did you did you tell that story? I thought you told that earlier, right? I, I briefly, I did. Yes. Yeah, but now now it's uh, now it's up to her to to capture Coney. Um, that's where she, where she's at, folks. Exactly. It's, it's she's she's a one woman hunter. Yes, Coney 2023. Yo, it's and crazy they still haven't gotten Coney though. <laughs> like he's just some warlord in Africa. Like how hard is it? We can fucking like drone strike anybody. Like why? Like I'm not saying we should, but I'm just saying like they they made a big deal about it and they're like we're gonna kill Coney and then Brad Pitt. <laughs> he's like the one it guy the drone you, can't reach. This is it. Forrest Miller advocating the use of drone technology <laughs> to strike at his enemies. <laughs> I don't, Coney's not, I have nothing against the guy. I was just in Forrest Miller, ally of uh, Coney. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, and... fucking Andrew, Andrew Tate, the fucking disgusting misogynist sex trafficker guy. He, I guess, uh, was pro Coney and he started making a line of shirts that just said Coney. And people were like, Oh, you mean you want to stop Coney? And he's like, No, I like Coney. Coney's a lot like me. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm pro Coney. Wow, I'm, a, I'm the... <laughs> All I remember from this is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 earlier on, I thought it was going to be the Airbud discourse, but you might be right about that. I'm uh, I'm getting, I'm getting to the point where I need I need to I need to eat dinner. Like I'm getting to the same point from yeah, uh, yeah delicious from the well, oh, no man. from the from the from Made the Tony from Air episode. Bud. I'm getting to the same point where I started doing the Mario jokes. I think. That's like where that. where I rushed to fucking do an episode and then like or whatever set up an episode and then by the end of it I was like hungry enough that I was like just doing Mario voices. Well now I remember. Well now it's clout. Now I'm hunting clout. <laughs> All right, so go to Coney 2012 to go find whatever Christina's up to. She's hunting warlords. Coney right? Coney Neutron. <laughs> Coney. <laughs> as as Coney someone Neutron. who's yeah yeah as someone who's whose nickname <laughs> against my will as a Tone child was Coney. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, hunting who? Oh, okay. They're doing Wisconsin's uh, Wisconsin's biggest warlord. Scott Walker? Everyone's too, uh, you guys, guys gonna say everyone's too <laughs> drunk to really make it much of a competition. So, Thank but uh, yes. are we, people are drink here. With, that's what's funny. Are we done with is plugs? that it? Is that it, Andy? You got anything else? I believe that's plugs. That, that is the plugs, ladies and gentlemen. So, so please wow. plug away. It went exactly the same amount of time, even though there's fewer people. All right, well. <laughs> Let us go to Conan. It. Final thoughts. Yes. Of course, this is a bit where we, you know, you can say whatever from the movie or uh, things you didn't get. To. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I need to actually like streamline that for the future because I try to explain it and every time it's different. I'm like, I don't know, things we didn't get to or. <laughs> I've never can once like, wrote. Final thoughts music. And you could, could Conan that. could sing it. Dun, 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 Time dun, to dun. articulate your final <laughs> thoughts. Uh, I, I, I always freeball the uh, letterbox one-liners intro every single time, and that's why it's never quite the same. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm freeballing right now. Hashtag no panties. Because <laughs> I'm free, free balling. Look, this is a very well-rounded courtroom procedural. The documents are a very important time in Argentina's history as justice for the people was sought out against the military. The trial of Untas, it's a civilian court case for brutal crimes done under a 
nasty, bloody dictatorship. I think there's a nice blend of archival footage later with reenactments, and uh, it moves along. It's compelling in a way where I think other things would falter with it. I think the characters are well-rounded and have more going on than um, a lot of times courtroom procedurals will be like spouting random factoids or quips, and it just doesn't seem to add anything to it. Uh, I think what really makes this shine, though, is the little capsules of the all the victims that are uh, deposed for their testimony. The road up to that and um, how many of them were under threats for their life. And I think that's what would raise the stakes for it. Uh, for me, the gold standard of this kind of film was anatomy of a murder. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, I think that people expect a, for a few good, a uh, few good men kind of um, moments now when they see a courtroom procedural, but uh, this definitely outpaces something like trial of Chicago seven by a large margin. There's not a lot of stylistic surprises here. But I th everything everything unspools very nicely, and it makes for a very engaging watch. There's and, some, I uh, mean, like the uh, the lighting, and I think in the cinematography, and this is kind of interesting. At some there's point. some cool cinematography, yeah. I, I think that when well, you're in the car with him in the beginning, and it, you can you actually feel like you're driving into the street that he's doing. I really liked that shot. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like I said, not a ton of stylistic surprises, but the stuff that, that's in there are, does work. I think also what I love about the low key level of of our main prosecutor is by the time it gets to like him making his final argument which again as you mentioned he does sitting down there isn't some big like walking around and gesticulating and i wish it was cutting though. with with uh it's thing. Like, it, yeah understood. it's hard to watch and talk for like eight minutes it's just sitting there in one spot i'm like dude get up use the room eat up the furniture or whatever like what do you what do you call it uh you know chew up the furniture eat, eat, eat up the scenery yeah <laughs> Eat the furniture, would you? You know, that <laughs> classic saying that everyone talks about. <laughs> Just go eat the furniture. What? What's he fucking talking about? I've been hanging out with Audrey too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a classic <laughs> eating the furniture. You know what they say. I'm going to eat the furniture. <laughs> well, but like I said, everything unspools nicely. And, and I think the fact that you get like this is kind of such a low-key dude in so many ways that when it when it gets to him making making that closing argument, it's so impactful. And the, the words uh, resonate so much that when... You know, like what's what's the what's the exact uh, translation of uh, Nuka Mas? It's a, a, a never yet, right? If I remember yeah. correctly, or yeah. Yeah, 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 and that that's it's hard to watch that and not be like, fuck yeah, that's what's up. I mean, it's because the, it's, you know, it's incredibly it's powerful. powerful. It's the same uh, slogan as the you know the Holocaust victims, um, which which is good because it, it is and, a genocide, right? Like because it, it is a genocide, and yeah. and, he, and like and like he articulates everything and uns, uns, and it co and it this goes all the way down and then like it's just you have this whole massive thing that you're sitting with and then the capstone on it is, is succinct and uh you know and then you see people like people putting like the bandanas back on you know and you see people like you know like you know, getting up and like cheering and stuff and i think it's all the more engaging because again not a dude that you would think of like he's not like the uh, uh jimmy smiths or something where he's <laughs> like doing these the story um, also like, a big part of the going uh, to the bathroom or something the reason that it's also a genocide um is that it's the indigenous people and the black population that they went on right after, uh very yeah. specifically which i you know in this movie they don't make a big point of but um in, it's in kind of case. well just yeah. really anyone that didn't fit into their fascist like yeah, uh, yes. mold but like yeah but I, I think it's great class <laughs> because apparently the middle class, I, you know, I liked that they added that where, where he's like, uh, the middle class might actually decide what the fucking military dictatorship. They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a great movie. I think it's going to lose to all quiet on the Western front, uh, which I like, but I don't think that that's a better movie than this. I think it's just more popular. Um, and you know, we'll talk about that movie later as well. I'm glad we, I'm glad we covered this it's kind of weird circumstances to be doing it, but I'm glad we did because I think it's a worthwhile film. I think this sits nicely and is kind of a partner movie in some ways to uh, battle of Algiers and Z and movies yeah. along those lines. Cause and it's and like, like okay, what happens it's, after? Yeah. Like the, it's the homage or whatever. Like I like that. It, it, um, it's a good homage. I think of that. Uh, Whereas opposed to like, and with Z, which has the most bummer ending ever, which basically, oh yeah, and like everyone was like captured and killed those good guys, and like no one went to jail for anything. He's like, we did it, Joe. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like she it was like off. after this, he went to he went to prison, and uh, everyone else, you know, <laughs> kind of just got killed. Sorry, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like, oh man. So it's, it's all right. Nice sorry, to <laughs> guess that wasn't our Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think it's 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 notable too that you know at first when you hear like what. The sense is going to be is like no, it's not enough. It's not enough. You know, and I think that that's a 
that's very earned for that. I, I like this movie. I think I don't think it's a movie for everyone, but I think if you're remotely into the subject matter and if you like um, kind of the inside baseball, like courtroom stuff, I think this is way better than something like Trial of Chicago 7 for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Andy? Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Uh, I was going in just because I mostly because I was curious. Uh, said I, I do have that graphic novel in the works about immigration, and uh, a lot of it is about uh, what happened in South and Central America. Uh, you know, it's very important to to tie this to things that actually did happen because you know, in 2018, um, you know, uh, uh, Trump had the the uh, immigration people. Uh, basically grabbing anybody who looks indigenous and telling them, no, America's full, you can't come in, and, and uh, sending them away, um, and, and which, you know, predominantly hurt, uh, you know, uh, South and Central Americans. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I think, I think like, like this affects us here, not just because, uh, yes, we were involved, but because of uh, the, the, the actions of it, send, uh, send people... Um, <laughs> Sorry, that comment's right. <laughs> streaming, <laughs> streaming. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's good. Safe and secure. Um, so hit that bell. <laughs> <laughs> we got Air Brandon over here too. Sorry, Andy. Go ahead. But but yeah, no. The um uh, yeah, it, it has it has real world uh, consequences in this country as well. Uh, beyond just the fact that we were involved because because it does affect immigration and I think I think that's a very yeah. important issue into to uh understand uh like like not just like what we did but like what happened and why people are coming uh because of uh you know genocides like this uh, and, and that they're still kind of happening over there um which uh, you know, uh by the way the the Reagan administration's falling out with uh Argentina's uh military junta came from the the Falkland Wars where, where uh, England just kind of invaded them. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, interesting fact about uh, Hector Germain uh, Osterheld. Uh, his his wife um, was uh, part of the Abuelas... Uh, um, what is it? Uh, Abuelas de Plaza de Mayo. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, and she was like the spokesperson for the uh, grandmothers who were uh, getting their kids back because uh, uh, right. his grandchild was actually born in captivity as... His daughter, I mentioned that that uh, went off to prison and, and died. Um, she mm -hmm. she had a kid in prison, and uh, she she fought and got uh, uh, actually both of the grandkids. Uh, one uh, one went oh, to her. And one went that to the kid was me. <laughs> uh, one <laughs> child went to her. One child went to the other grandparent. Uh, but but uh, he had uh, two grandkids that that uh, fortunately found their way back to the family. So you know uh, there That's are good. some happy endings to, to uh, these horrible stories. I mean, some of them, uh, even in this movie, right? Like, it seems like people got people got justice. Um, you know, at least some of them. Uh, you know, after the yeah. fact, it seems like it's very up up in the air about um, who <laughs> ended up actually disappearing and who disappeared temporarily. Chris was with the clown. Um, but Andy, is that is that all? Is that all you wanted to? Uh, Those are the big say? points. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I, all right. Well, my last. Uh, I mean, it's serious is, business. As much as we're having a laugh here, we do understand that, like, this is serious business. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to shout out uh, Alberto Fernandez and Lula's uh, bromance that they have going on. Um, they're they're starting a new currency, I guess, called the Sir. They're looking into that with uh, Lula. Really? Lula made his uh, yeah, his, his it's finance it's not got a new currency. It is it is a uh, currency between countries. It's really fascinating, yeah. but it's really complicated. Well, they're trying to do it as a well, regional currency. That, they're trying to, yes. <laughs> uh, they're trying to like have the entirety of because it's a trading deficit. But um, yeah, I just wanted yeah. to shout out their their bromance because it seems uh, I love it. It's cute. That's very, very sweet. Yeah, look at this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm about to go eat some food. So uh, you know, we'll be back Friday for our actual uh, first episode, Banshees of Inisherin, and uh, I'm gonna tell everyone that I don't like them no more.